hello. Hey, hey guys. guys, how's it going? Hey Howard. Sure. How are you? Hey Ben. So you don't want a stool, right? I don't need a stool. Oh, stool, huh? I, uh, Look at you. All angry. It's angry. I'm an angry. It's angry, man. Angry. When you stand, you're angry. Hey Ben. That's <laughs> I just thought it'd be fine. Yeah. Does that throw shit off? I don't know. No. Okay. By the way, Robin, I don't know if you can see, but guess who's here today? Rachel Butera and Jay Tesoro, two uh, big time voice people. You guys were on. Who won that year? We did a contest to see who could do the best voices. Who won? Well, there were two. And we were in, Rachel won the first one. The Whack Pack one. The Whack Pack one, staff impressions contest. And then there's oh, yeah. the second one was a, a, a broader spectrum, celebrity. Rachel won the first one. Uh, the what? guy did Obama won the second Obama. one. What did you do to win? I lost uh, everyone. Who did I win with? Tra Trace? It was a Trace? Underdog. I you did know. Underdog? God, I can't yeah. I, 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 I'm feeling a little bit spotty in my memory. I've, ha I've had some, some health issues lately. I can't quite remember. These two are so good at doing people yeah. on our show. And celebrities, too. How are you, underdog woman? I, I, I've been okay, but I missed, I, I missed the St. Patrick's Day parade because I had an intestinal issue. I know you uh, are. Well, me, too. Oh, hey, Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, I got Bigfoot intestinal, had an intestinal issues, too. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out I'm lactose intolerant, it is. I didn't know that. Underdog, what, what's going on with your health? Are you very ill? Uh, I'm not that ill. I'm, I'm, I'm better now, but I, I was having problems uh, um, taking dumps, and, and, and I couldn't make it to the parade because I was leaking out, out my butthole, and, and I just couldn't <laughs> wow. get there. Would you wow. sit on you me? Imagine? I don't usually use such strong language, but uh, I think it's called for. At the moment, that's about the best impression I've ever heard. The Seriously, big right? fucking turn on it is. Who is that? <laughs> you know what's great? We can actually have Underdog Lady on the show. She won't do the show. Yeah, you won't do the show, will you? you don't I don't. Be... I don't like coming. I come under protest. You know how I feel, but I'm here to spread the word of Underdog everywhere. Underdog, <laughs> how how big a cock did Underdog have? Uh, I, 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 I can't really speak about... Uh, I, this is why I don't want to do the show, Mr. Stern. That's why she'd get mad at me. It was about it, as big as mine, nine and a half inches it is. Yeah. She, that little dog? That little yeah, dog. He, he was 90% cock, 10% dog. <laughs> what are you doing these days? Me? Yeah. I'm yeah, you, not, not, <laughs> not your characters. I'm Come out on. in L.A. trying to make the voiceover career happen. Is it happening or what? How Some, could it not be? I, know, I don't know. Some things are happening. I met with a guy from uh, who's got a cartoon on Adult Swim called Metalocalypse, wants me to do some voices for his new show. Yeah. So you could do tons fun. of voices. I know. I can't wait. They actually want me to do original, like, create, you know, made-up characters. Right. Well, that's, right. Same, that's the death metal show. Yeah. So but, it's perfect. But they have you a new show. Like they, they have a new shows show. shows you how hard the voiceover business is. It's a small industry. It's a small industry, and it's hard to break into because you're really That's talented. That's the thing, yeah. And you can't even get anything going. But I know, I, you know what I, it is? <laughs> what? Say, say I what? have some stuff going and it's because of this show. I mean, ev every time I meet another person out there, they're like, they're huge fans of mine from the show. Oh, and, that's, and every job I'm getting is because they've heard me on this show. Yeah. Thank goodness, because you know what's happening. Celebrities, these, these oh, actors yeah. are taking these jobs. Totally, yeah. Jay, yeah. are you getting any work? No, I was just going to say, she has, a, she has no work, as you put it. I have absolutely zero fucking work. <laughs> you have less you work. I have less work. Well, you know, I, I have other things, but, fucking I, business but I'm true. Fuck you. You have money. Hey, yeah, Tracy. Hey, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy, you don't like Jay, right? No. What do I need to stand next to this fucking guy for? He's got, he owns a fucking environmental company. He's all green and shit. I don't know shit. what He's she's talking green. about. He makes I'm green. a fucking comedian. Oh, here. fuck I've you. been a comedian for fucking 25 years, and I tell you, this little minky here is a filthy fucking animal. You can go fuck yourself. I would never Come touch on, you with a 10-foot pole. Come on, price. when I hear that voice, you know what happens? That cum starts to bubble right at the tip of my prick head. <laughs> I'm ready to squirt my mule juice down your fucking <laughs> throat. You make my fucking vagina shrivel up. Yeah, Fuck you see you, it? You, look at her, Howard. Look how fucking damp she is. <laughs> Tracy, you're not. I can smell it. Tracy, are you hot for dice over here? No, I wouldn't fucking touch him. He's disgusting. What is he? Is he a Jew? Is he Italian? He's a fucking I'm wannabe. I'm fucking Brooklyn. You're losing all your fucking hair. You're 900 pounds. You're still lighting that cigarette <laughs> I'm, doing the fucking moves. I'm, I'm in destruction. Apparently you didn't see my last special. When was the last time somebody sucked your... Who put their fucking head down in your penis and sucked you. your fucking I'm cock? I'm gonna tell you. So yesterday this chick is sucking my dick. Doubt it. Right? And afterwards, and afterwards, she's like, was it good? 
I said, yeah, but you only had two items. I would have let in front of, let you go in front of me anyway. Oh! I wouldn't fuck you with Grillo's dick. Wow. <laughs> Tracy, you're angry with Dice. I can't stand him. You know what I hate most? Do you ben like Howard. anyone? I don't really like anybody. Rob. I said it before. I'll say it again. I like Robin. I'm on her fucking side. I love her. I hate everybody else. They're all douches. You just like Robin. Yeah, but you know, Howard, this is fucking Charlie Sheen. Duh. Winning. Duh. I think Tracy, I want her to be one of my fucking goddesses, huh? Come I wouldn't on, fucking Tracy. come to your... You are a fucking crack rock smoking meth tooth. It looks like somebody pulled your fucking teeth out of your head, jumbled them up in a cup, and fucking threw them back in. What's Listen, going I on? want to love you violently. I I want you to come to my palatial Malibu mansion. I want you to do a massive stockpile of drugs at me and make love to me on a daily basis. I mean, it sounds like a pretty fair deal if I would say so myself. Duh. Disgusting. Well, let me say something. Uh, you, Tracy, are very angry today. I'm angry always, Howard. And you only like Robin, which is really, you know, just it's just odd. I mean, the only person you like is Robin. I'm like a misogynist in reverse. These fucking guys, I can't stand them. You know it's a fucking misogynist environment here. I hate everybody. Is Wendy the retard here? Hi, Howard. <laughs> is that Wendy? Is, yes. it, is that you? Yes. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Oh, okay. I'm just playing Xbox and eating lollipops last night. Can you explain how gravity works? Uh, I have uh, six gravities in my mouth. So it, it's Did you too make in your diaper today? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> do, yeah. You, do you do you do you like to eat your own excrement? Yes. <laughs> do you like to eat your own excrement and drink your own urine? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. Yes. Do you want some money? Yeah. How? I need money from Xbox and for the Wii oh. and for video games, please, oh. please. <laughs> Who else is over there, Jay? <clears throat> Dice again? Because I like him. No, listen, I got Dice out the fucking ass here. But, you know, you got a list in front of you. Do you want me to do a little bit of Gilbert Godfrey? That I can do. No, I like better Dice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now listen, I'm, I'm versatile. I'm versatile. Who else do we have here? Let me see. Uh... Hey, uh, you know. You know, the last contest, you know, I was at, you know, I came out. Oh, who's that, Norm MacDonald? Oh, what do you mean? Mean? this guy's a good comedian. What, what do you mean, who's, uh, who's Wait, now we have two comedians Norm here. McDonald, you know? You got hey. Norm MacDonald. Hey, yeah. And you got, what's your name again? I Wanda. Do, I, it's Wanda. How, Wanda Sykes. You don't Sykes. know me. Yeah, Wanda, yeah you right. You recognize me by the size of my ass, don't you? Yes, Larry I do. David did. Yeah. <laughs> Wanda, what, what are you doing now these days? Oh, you know, I'm doing stand-up, and I'm married to that firecracker wife of mine. She's Colombian. She got that hot, spicy pussy hat, and I love her. Norm, what do you think of that, that she's a lesbian? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, it's her choice, you know. I, I support gay people. And you know what else I support? I support uh, AGT. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, I love that show. I'm really excited about America's that. America's Got Talent? Yeah, this uh, new season, you know. Right, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I'm really yeah looking forward to my uh, one of my comedy heroes, you know, right. sitting there between a, uh, a brainless <laughs> model and some uh, washed-up pop star, you know, judging like some fucking nine-year-old uh, using a fucking hula hoop. Hey, you know, it doesn't get better than that, does yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's fucking uh, class Howard? A entertainment. Hey, Howard, it's Ro. I'm a little pissed that they didn't make me the judge on America's Got Talent. You want to know you. something? Rosie, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I went to the wall. I mean, I went to the mat or whatever that expression for is. For me? Yeah, for you. <laughs> I, I wanted you to be the judge you on America's did? Day. Yes. I didn't know this. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I mean, I did say it publicly, but even behind the scenes, I said, she'd be terrific. Wouldn't you? Like, if you had to tell a nine-year-old that they didn't so have So they went talent. Heidi Klum? Yeah, they, yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, they always say the skinny bitch. <laughs> they don't listen to me, do they? No. Yeah, you know, I, well, you know, that's funny you say that, because, uh, you know, I thought uh, Rosie's on that new show, Splash. Yeah, you know, I saw like a promo. No, that's Louis. No, Anderson. I saw like a oh, guy. Very no, funny. it looked like she had like dyed her hair or something. No, she was like wearing like a wet suit. Yeah. You know? Hey, yeah, yeah. You know, Rosie, Rosie you know, Norm is trying to make a hey, joke. You know, yeah, I, know what he, how... I know what he's saying about. You know what? Hey, I speak yeah. openly hey, about Rosie. my weight. It's fine. You can make fun of me all yeah. you want. I'm indestructible these days. I have a new child. Yeah, yeah, I had a heart attack and I made it through. Hey, uh, remember at the old studio, you used to have like a a gigantic jar. Like with like a uh, picture of like Rosie O'Donnell's like enormous head. But Rosie and I made. Wait We're a all past yeah, that now. You know, now but I, I love you. Know. We, we made I want up. To know. We, how many jelly ago. beans? I love her now. How many jelly beans was in that jar? Uh, I've been on, thinking Norm. about you're that. Up, you're bringing up uh, old news. We had to go through that to get to this. Namaste. Right. right. She's funny. <laughs> well, listen, you two. 
I think you're terrific. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think the two of you are terrific. I really, truly do. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. Yeah. I, well, Rachel was talking... One on one show? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What <laughs> do you mean? Well, we were we wrote together for this. We poured, we sort of worked some stuff out, and we we're thinking maybe we could turn it into something that could be yeah. a one on one show. We don't we know who to talk about to. that years ago. Yeah. Should why we, did we? Should we, we talk that? to Gary? I think hey, Gary. Can... I was going to be like, you know, I was going to say, hey, Gary. You know, you think it's you think it'd be good? Is if that we... supposed to be Gary? Yeah, it's supposed to be Gary. Don't don't. Well, that's not sour Gary. shoes. Everyone, you can't. everyone, everyone seems to like my Gary. It's too bad. The king of the media doesn't like. I like dice. He likes dice. Okay, I'll just stick the Bigfoot and dice clay. Right. What about, oh, did you want to fuck Oh, yeah. right. Oh, Lupe. wow. Lupe. Yeah, Lupe. I wanted to stick a big pin up something my asshole, baby. Oh, Lupe, yeah, you know what I want you to do to me, Lupe? What? I want you to rub some scabies lotion on my cock. <laughs> that way, that way it is. I can come and you can kill those little bugs at the same time it is. <laughs> what? Lupe, would you like that? Uh, he said babies lotion? No, scabies. I scabies. Don't, I don't know what that was scabies. I don't know what that is. Yeah, well, how about this one? <laughs> how about me and my friend Silverfish it is? How about we get together and buck you right in the ass? I love Anna. I'll be okay with that, baby. Yeah, well, let's <laughs> fucking do it. I'll bend over right now. You like big balls? Yeah, I like big boobs. I love pussy. <laughs> do you like pussy? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> you have a big penis? Yeah, I got a big penis. Told you before, nine and a half pinches. Uh, I love big penis. <laughs> you know, they're doing this Bigfoot. It's killing this me. forever. It's yeah. so stupid. I could listen to that fucking forever. Dead it's on. fucking You great. love the Bigfoot. He cracks you it's up the, when I hear him on. Yeah, yeah. It's the, uh, it's the head injury as a child and the massive <laughs> tongue I have it is. It is. It is. <laughs> the Lupe, uh, you recently gave up your porn career, I guess, and now you're a musician. I'm singing with a, a group of girls called the Ex-Girlfriends. Yeah. And we like to shake our titties, and we like to shake our pussies, <laughs> and we love it. I love to dance and sing. <laughs> you know what, what you Howard? Sing? Howard, this is Al Pacino. Pop music, rather. Oh, Al Pacino's here. Yeah, yeah, everyone's like here. Lupe? We got fucking dice. We had Gilbert. I don't know where he fucking went. Do you like little Lupe? You know what? You know why I like Lupe? Because she's got a great ass! <laughs> and you want to stick your head all the way up there? Oh, yeah! Wow. You're about as old as my uh, granddaughter, but let's fucking do it. You want to know something? I'm I'm into this show of you two guys. Or Yeah, why not? On Howard Well, yeah, especially if we have script rather than... I was thinking, like, maybe new, like but... news, like a news show, but all read in character. But yeah. I, I don't know how that works with, like, getting sued by celebrities. Because my agent in L.A. told me, because I was doing voices for an app, Celebrity Voices, he goes, don't do them as good as you. You can because you could get sued. By <laughs> really? Them. Yeah, well, I that, never heard. I don't that'd know. That'd be a great show. Hey, I'm Norm Macdonald. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, right. Do a shitty impression. Because yeah, I think do... if a celebrity heard their voice hey, look at coming me. out I'm of an Al app, they know it is. You know. No, no, I mean you're allowed to do parody. That's what I thought. It was but... a show called Cappy Cats for years, where famous comedians would go on and yeah. do impressions of people. That's what I thought. But yeah, of course. But it's you an could honor. see that it wasn't the person. You would know though. it wasn't that. Well, yeah, I mean, you call the show. You call the show Schmappy Cats, and then. No. I mean, we'll put Junior after everybody's name. Right, right, Junior. Like Bigfoot Junior. Hey, Bigfoot yeah, Junior. Bigfoot Junior, Pacino Junior, Dice Junior. We got the whole family it is. <laughs> who am I leaving out here? Well, let me see who else you got. Wanda Sykes. Gary Busey. Listen, there's a rape case in the news. Oh, hey, that's, uh, I know who you are. Something's going that's on. That's Whoopi. Steubenville, Ohio, about rape, right? It's not rape rape, though. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of like a, and they're even blaming the girls themselves, aren't they? Now, Whoopi, how do you feel about Barbara Walters getting rid of Elizabeth Hasselbeck and Joy Behar? Are you nervous about your job? I'm not nervous about my job. Listen, Howard, if you were an executive, would you get, who would you get rid of? Well, I, I, I'd probably get rid of you, I think. Why would you get rid of me? I, I thought know. we I mean, were friends, Howard. <laughs> I thought we had a private conversation. Well, what's going on here? I thought we had a private conversation. No, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's so random. Why get rid of one person and not the other? I mean, it's all... Because uh, I'm the talent, baby. That's why. So they did research and you're the most talented? Yes, absolutely. They, in other words, people like yeah, you. They're right? all a bunch of fucking whores anyway. Who are we kidding? <laughs> I try to get on that fucking view to plug my shit. These cunts won't have me on. Claiming that I'm some sort of misogynistic woman hater. <laughs> you know what the real story is, Howard? What is it? 
they'd be all over me. They'd be all over trying to suck my fucking dick. I'd have to fight them off. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi, what about what Dice has said? Uh, he says that you're, he, say? he said you're a cunt. He said all the women on The View are cunts and that... Uh, Especially you... that Hasselbeck, huh? <laughs> oh. just what I do off. to her, right? I do things to her that I wouldn't do to a fucking farm animal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you've, been, you've been completely irrelevant for many, many years now. We'll never have you on The View. Of look it up, indestructible. It. And I want, you know, I want everybody to look at indestructible. Actually, actually, I want you to go on YouTube, Google indestructible, and watch the the outtakes from the show where I come on in true Joe Piscopo fashion, and I bring my hot little wife out with my sons in a band, and I sing a fucking Elvis tune. Whoopi, what do you no say joke. about that? How can That's you say? That's not a bit. How can you say he's irrelevant when he's doing stuff like that? <laughs> oh yeah, it sounds like a, it sounds like a great I'm, act you got going. Because I'm the Elvis of comedy. Come on. Nobody even cares about Elvis anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, whatever. You? But you know what I care about? Ronnie. Where's Ronnie Money? He's a man after my own heart. You like Ronnie? Yeah, we're both from fucking New York. We've grown up Italian. Listen to me. Come on. The day you fuck Frank Langella with his giant yeah. Frankenstein cock and he turns your pussy the color purple, then you can talk to me. Wow. It's <laughs> too much. Listen, you two. I'm impressed with you. Yes, I believe you guys should have a show on Howard 101. There's no question. I'm going to talk to Mr. Tim Sabian today about that. And I mean, we're not going to put it on the back burner either. Good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, by the way, you can check out Jay at jtesoro.com, and you can check out Rachel Butera at rachelbutera.com, who's out there trying to make it somewhere. You know what I'm doing, Howard? I'm co-hosting Andy Dick's podcast, and oh, no I feel kidding. bad about it because everybody on Twitter is telling me not to because of you. But I know that you would never stop anybody from like doing. No, I'm not that. stopping anybody from. First of all, it's a podcast, so know, nobody so cares. nobody gives a he, shit about it. He's come a long way. But I keep, I you know, I keep telling him, why don't you try and just call? Because he feels no, so he has. bad. He oh, has yeah, called. Okay. He's reached out. I just, you're, you're I just I, I'm done with him. Mm. I'm done with him. Was it the anti-Semitic thing? Yeah, I mean, fuck him with all that shit. I know. All that Jew shit. Yeah, that really Get enough weird. of that shit. Who needs it from him? Really weird, yeah. Oh, that fucking freak. I know. Is he pulling it together? He is. He's on Dancing with the Stars. He's sober. Wow. And I mean, I just, but I'm, I feel so conflicted because, you know, how much I love him. Well, I don't care. Do what you want. Mm. I'm doing a show with I'm with it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. We Who's heard from Wanda Sides. Right, Come Wanda? On. Yeah, you know what? We didn't talk about having a lesbian pope, though. Oh, really? Yeah, because... A lesbian pope? I've actually... I heard talk of it, Robin, but I'm against it because you get a woman in there. You know lesbians move in with each other the next day? You're going to yeah. have a Vatican full of pussy, and then everybody get the period at the same time, and the streets of Rome are going to run red. Dice, what do you make of one? <laughs> you know, That's not really is, that funny, you know, right? You know, shit, we were pitching a show, right, for us? I got to fucking get a show. It's called Dice's Joke Hunt. Right. Right? <laughs> and I can do a joke like, you know, I say, uh, you know, uh... What do you call what do you call the uh, uh, fat fingers on a lesbian? What do you call a lesbian with fat fingers? There ain't no mottling here. Well hung. <laughs> what do you call two lesbians floating down a river? Fur traders. Oh! Who wrote these jokes, Johnny Carson? I got them from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, uh, Rachel Butera and Jay Tesoro are terrific. Thanks, Alan. And um, you guys are really, really good. Thanks. Cool. Appreciate and, it. Uh, you know, I love having you here. Yeah. Love being here. It's Anytime. great hearing from all the characters. Yeah. Thank you. Underdog, <laughs> especially you, because I can never get you on the show because you're afraid of me. Well, if you would just, if you would just call off the dogs, Howard, maybe we could make up and be friends again. Well, I don't think so. I, I you know, I just, you just are so. You made up with Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, I love Rosie. Why not me? Rosie, let me say hello to you again. Hi, Howard. How you doing? <laughs> Howard, you know, you never really talked about my heart attack on the air. I know. I want to interview you about that. Yeah, I want yeah. to come in and tell you about it. I lost eleven pounds, and then I uh, adopted a kid, and I gained forty-seven back. <laughs> so you are now uh, doing very well. I'm doing very well. Everything's good. I'm resting in Nyack. I do a radio show. I'm taking care of myself. Kelly and I are wonderful. Right. You I got married, too. Howard. Yeah, I got married to Kel Kelly. That's the no, name, right? No, she's with Mish now. She's right. not with right. Kelly it's anymore. <laughs> you you got to work on that. You yeah, gotta you got to You know what? Up. I have so many children and, and so many wives and so many lesbian <laughs> experiences. I, I just forgot. <laughs> My heart attack put me in a bad state. Hey, Howard, I got one more. One more impression. Uh, who we got there, Jeff? Gary Busey! <laughs> Is that Gary Busey? Yeah, it's Gary I mean, Busey here. Hey, you know, we're talking to Rosie O'Donnell, who's an alternate lifestyle, a lesbo. 
I like to call her. I and like you know, uh, dice. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to bring some a variety, a variety to the table. And I'll just go with the bread and butter, fucking retard, and some other retard from fucking Brooklyn, right? Why, tr- why try to broaden my horizons at this point? <laughs> let me see who else you got there. Wait, wait, maybe I can broaden your horizons. You got Charlie yeah, Sheen. That was good. Yeah. You got Winning. The, I mean, Charlie's like, you know, duh, uh, yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> I love all these characters, Howard. Oh, how yeah, Mary Ann from Brooklyn. Hey, Norman. Howard, I want to come on America's Got Talent again. When are you going to have me on? Uh, do you know Norm MacDonald? I do know Norm MacDonald. I love you. Yeah, I heard her at the uh, show last time, you know? Yeah, it was just uh, it was just me and Mary Ann. I follow Howard around. I love him. You know, I know I need is Howard in my life. <laughs> All right, listen, you two. I uh, I am going to work on a show for you guys on Howard 101. Excellent. That'd be awesome. Maybe it should be scripted. Maybe it shouldn't be. I don't know. Yeah. You a guys bit, work a little pre- bit of both. Maybe a little of both. Yeah. Take some I mean, we got, I like we got, since we got the script at what time last night? Yeah, we got it <laughs> from <laughs> so Will. Like, like four o'clock in the afternoon yesterday. <laughs> was there a script? Well, there there was, was, no one showed some it questions you might be Guidelines asking us. Oh, I, I didn't even look at it. <laughs> a lot of good that did, man. That's okay. Yeah, try, I, I ought to. I ought to think about that. Cher, who was the one star in Hollywood you would want? You wouldn't want to have sex with, and why? Oh, that's easy. My daughter, Chastity Bono. <laughs> uh, underdog Lavity. Would you ever have sex with a man like Tiger Woods? Ah. Uh, is, is that a superhero? It sounds like some kind of a hybrid animal forest dweller. Jody Foster is here? Hi, Howard. How you doing? No, no she's not. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds <laughs> a lot <laughs> like Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> I can't believe we're, who's here, Rob. We're, 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 <laughs> we're grasping uh, it's The studio's full. <laughs> Jesse Ventura is here. Jesse. That's right, Howard, and I probably don't sound anything like him. <laughs> No, you do. You do. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. All right, you it do. is. Is that enough? It is. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is. Well, that when we run in 2016, you and me, Howard, it'll be Jesse for president. It is. I like the sound of it. Is. <laughs> no, Jesse, I'm going to run with you. It's going to be fun. Oh, well, you got to come down to Mexico where I'm living off the grid. We can go surfing and hunt and forage for our own food. It is. <laughs> you got my vote. All right, listen, you two. I could listen to this all day. It's beautiful music. I could listen to you two all day. It's so Great. good. I love making you laugh. I love it. I love oh my, my life. God. So, you know, you really don't think my Gary impression's pretty good. You know, it's something that I've done for a while. Because you know, once I've you hear sour shoes, it's, 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 it's not bad, it's but not you're, bad. it's um, a sour shoes is yeah. like the zenith. Yeah. yeah you hit the zenith with it. Meanwhile, you have so many good ones. Yeah, it's true. But you know, I, I always I, I try to get like the body language down. You know, it's like I love I love doing it. It's a fun impression. Thanks, Thanks Gary. Thanks. Thanks for letting me do it a horrible yeah. impression in front of you. Too. No, no. It's true. <laughs> Thanks, no, Howard. Hi. Oh, and there's Lisa J. Hi, Lisa. Hi. How are you? Hey guys, how's it going? You know, I'm gonna stick with my Gary impression because I just love doing it. I, love I know it sucks compared to sour shoes, but come on, you know, I, th- I think I got like the the, you know, the body language down, and you know, I have like prosthetic teeth that I use sometimes. But uh, all right, we'll talk later. <laughs> An You're gonna do it until they love it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Jay, what is it about Gary's voice that makes you want to keep? Trying? It's just something that's in my been in my head for fucking like 20 years, you know. Because he just doesn't stop fucking talking. You know, he's always just talking. And even when he doesn't have anything to say, or, or you know, he's made to look like a jerk, he just keeps on talking his way out of it and digging deeper, and deeper in the hole. And there he walked by. And that's not too awkward. No, not at all. Most, he's like the most made fun of man in history. Oh, man. Pa, pa, quite possibly, yeah. right? What's it like just to come off the cuff and Howard's throwing these scenarios at you? How difficult is that to, to do? It's nerve-wracking, but once you break the ice and get a few lines out and you get some laughs, yeah. boom, you, you, hit, you hit a groove, you hit your stride, and you can go. Of course, you can hit some... It bumps along the way if Howard says your fucking impression sucks. Ah, no, that's uh, go go back to dice. It's, it's almost so better though than if he let you go on with right, it. Right, like right. I would, I would hate to go on with it if it sucks. Right. You know what it I becomes mean? Becomes sort of self-indulgent too. Like you think you have the voice yeah. in your head, and everyone else, what the fuck is this guy and it's, doing? it's hard to be objective. But about it, Rachel it. and I were both talking yesterday. We were both sort of sweating, and uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't sleep that well uh, yeah. because this Two is hours. this was new. I mean, when when we did the impressions contest, you know, we rehearsed for a while and this and that, and uh, we had our sort of canned voices and. 
and this was supposed to be so much more freeform. It was like, what the fuck are we going to be doing? So, uh, yeah. Like straight improv. So. Right, you can prepare all you want, but once the mics turn on, you have no idea. I what's actually really like happen. it yeah. though because ha Howard is just—he's got some magical quality that makes you feel so comfortable. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but the yeah. minute he's like—he's looking in your eyes, and you know he's on your—he's yeah. on your side. Is he's, what it is. He's got charisma. He's got, <laughs> he's got and he that wants thing. you to do well. He wants to laugh, and so the minute he starts yeah. laughing, like I'm like, give me more, yeah. come, come at me more, give yeah, me more yeah, to yeah, do, right. give me more to say. So I, I like it. Uh, all right, brackets. Let's not spend too much time on this because we got to get a lot to get to, and Louis C.K. is coming in. So, all right, most annoying, uh, most annoying, annoying staff. staff. You, you don't want to do what animal would you have sex with? <laughs> all right, go ahead. So it's broken into four categories: the inner circle, Howard TV, back office, and Howard. Just go Warner ahead. News. The inner circle. Who's more annoying? Bench? I don't like that inner circle thing. I don't. I don't like. A, they, who decides who the inner circle is? People on I the think outside. It's mean means the studio inside yeah. the studio. All right. Okay, Benji or That's Fred? Some circle we're in. Benji or Fred? All right. Benji. Yeah, I mean, Fred is annoying. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But Benji's the most annoying, isn't he? We're all annoying. Yes, but Benji's got to beat us all. Benji's, re in all seriousness, I Fred think, is the least annoying guy. I say the game is over when you pick Benji. Yeah, I think Benji. I mean, won. I'm not, I'm not lobbying here, but <laughs> Benji's clearly the, the. You know what? You're right. I'm looking at yeah, these Benji's brackets. Benji's the winner. He's what's, he's what's known as an overall tournament one seed. He I, is I say the Benji. Michael Jordan of annoying. Yeah, because I'm he looking is. like like it's he's Benji, a hall of famer. Then it's like Robin Quivers or Gary Delabate. I'll just fill that in. You can't yeah. Even pick. <laughs> I don't, okay. but, then, but but then and let's say let's say it was Robin, okay? Yeah, you could put me in there. If if it ended up being Robin versus Benji, of course it's, it's got to be Benji. Well, okay, so look at the rest of the list. All right, here, hold and on. tell me who could beat Benji. All right, Scott Nobody. DePace is not more annoying than Benji. You yeah. might disagree with him politically, but so what? No, he's not annoying. He's a good dude. Doug Goodstein. No. Not annoying. Doug no. is annoying when he... But, especially... I mean, not on the Benji level. Yeah, no. Nowhere near. <laughs> Although his April Fool's joke was annoying when he stares at you and, he, and he, his eyes bulge out of his head. That is annoying. But who's... Is, is Scott... Ronnie or... Mund is annoying, but he's not as... An... Ronnie's annoying only because he doesn't understand half the shit we're talking about. Right. Uh, Mike Ganji is it? Well, Mike Ganji's super annoying. But he's also sweet. But he's also never right. here. But he, And he's also not as annoying as Benji. Right. Jason's not annoying to me. Scott Salem, yeah, he could be annoying. Scott Salem is annoying. Annoying. <laughs> uh, but the book on Jason is that he's annoying, but I Sal, like Jason. Sal, Richard, Letha, John Lieberman, High Pitch Mike, or Shuley. No, it's Benji. Benji, it's you win. Benji yeah. wins. Yeah, Benji so, wins. We didn't, we, we didn't even have to have a tournament. Yeah, we didn't play. Right, give me the animal. Give me the animal yeah, bracket. The animal one. Oh, my yeah. God. Okay. <laughs> Are you Benji ready? Wins that that. One. Most annoying animal, Benji. <laughs> Would you rather have sex with a cheetah or a kangaroo? Well, a kangaroo is more human-like. You think? And a, and a kangaroo won't eat you. Yeah. But a cheetah is more attractive and... and, and <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it, I can't believe I'm... You know, I don't want to play this. Are these animals tranquilized? Yeah. yeah. Well, what is it, Benji? Yeah, I wasn't looking for you to get in. Well, I, I think this will make it good for you. Like, You're Richard it. developed it, but when we were playing it, you should really think of the like what could happen. Oh, safety? Kangaroo. Y yeah. Although but they, but can, they can kick. Richard, you developed this game. Which animal yeah. would you rather have sex with? Yeah, he pitched this he's one. He's thought about it a lot. I wonder how many he's had sex with. You got to think of the practicality oh, of it okay, and the a danger. Kangaroo, kangaroo. No, but a kangaroo can kill yeah, you but with a its kick. Can, yeah, but a cheetah can eat you. Right. But you and can you hold. have to worry about its claw. I could punch yeah. a kangaroo in the face. Right. And maybe get away, but I, a cheetah's going to eat This me. is ridiculous. But so you're can, literally raping the kangaroo. Right. But a kangaroo's <laughs> vagina is harder to get to oh, as well because they sit yeah. down. You know, I'm big, done with this game. big tail is hard to move. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We didn't even get the dolphin or hippo. What did you pick, Richard, between a dolphin and a hippo? A uh, dolphin, definitely. Because they're, they're prettier, yeah. I've heard they're supposed to have similar private parts to human. Oh, my God. Good Lord. <laughs> See, he grew up on a farm. You fucked like animals, right? No, never. Your friends did. Stop lying. No. You lie. Just, you don't know anyone who fucked an animal? Oh, He's, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. There was oh, a, yeah. That's what I thought. There was a, there was <laughs> yeah. a guy at our county fair that uh, that banged a sheep in front of a bunch of people. In, in front of them. Yeah. Howard, do you remember w way, way back years and years ago we had that weird German tape? Yeah. Where the guy had sex with a sheep. Yeah, oh, 
was horrible. And he kept chasing it around. Yeah, and then, and then he had sex with a chicken and he killed it. And he killed and it was like it. a yeah. retarded guy. Yeah. Horrible. Well, yeah. and uh, I always heard the thing with sheep was people would get big boots, boots. and they put the back legs inside yeah. the boots and they couldn't get. And then away. you step in the boots with oh, the. With they, the they couldn't run right away. So who ended? So well, all right, give me, give me. It's actually real quick. a method. So a koala bear or a bull mastiff dog? Oh my god. <laughs> Well, and who says they have to be female, by the way? Oh! <laughs> you don't want to be gay. All right. That's weird. What did you choose in, the, did you choose in that bracket? Um, probably the dog. Why? Uh, because a koala, I've heard they can be really mean, even though they're cute. <laughs> like, they'll scratch the hell out of you. But they're cute. But a dog, like oh a, a dog, if you're friendly with it, won't run away. If as you much. give it a treat, <laughs> it is man's <laughs> best friend. Uh, yeah. All right, Cole, hey, let's finish this. Bracket. So what is it? Is it you pick the koala? Or what, the dog? Uh, he's doing this. The I, dog. I, I have no fucking idea what to say about this. Oh, God, a sheep or a deer? A sheep or a deer? Deer. Benji even said to Benji's really attracted to deers. Not, but of the re- animals, they're the sexiest animal. By the way, first of all, deer plural is deer. Oh, okay. All right, that's number one. Number two. They're riddled with ticks. Benji is... Oh, right. No, I'm not attracted to deers, but if you were going to pick an deers. animal... Deers. <laughs> How are you not going to pick your deers? Uh, yeah, go ahead. What was that? If if you're going to pick an animal... A sheep purely would be on over looks, a deer. Purely on looks, not in safety. Right. Purely on looks. <laughs> a deer is very pretty. So is a sheep, and a sheep is gentle. Yeah, they're they're like stocky. They're like they're short. They're pudgy. They're yeah. stocky deers. like me. <laughs> oh stocky. All right. So what are you guys going? With? Deers are thin and pretty, like deer. Benji said. Deer. So deer. deer. Yeah. Okay. deer. A, ho- a horse or a cow? Oh Jesus. <laughs> Richard, what is it? Horse. Why? Uh, prettier. Okay. Definitely. Go ahead. Pre- but isn't a ca- horse more dangerous a than horse a cow? Could kill you. E- yeah, I and guess if you- they're in a stall. No. All yeah. right. Okay. Go ahead. I want to get over. The, I okay. want to really get this over with. A rabbit or a cat? <laughs> oh, my God. oh God. that's a tough one. Uh, oh, 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 for God's geez. sake! <laughs> what did you choose? Probably, I guess a rabbit. Because oh. rabbits can they're be sexier. They're prettier. Their fur is and really nice. And they fuck nice. like rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're horny. Uh, it's true. That that expression must a, mean something. Okay, yeah. a goat or a pig. <laughs> <laughs> what is better, a goat or a pig? A uh, goat. A goat. Yeah, all right. Goat. All right yeah. And then uh, a hippo or a dolphin. You said a dolphin, right? Yeah. Uh, mm. And then a giraffe or an ape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Did you go for a giraffe? Giraffes are pretty. Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. all right. Give them the give them the final. Okay, a kangaroo or a dog. Uh, dog. A bull mastiff dog, by the bull way. Bull mastiff. Okay. okay. Yeah. A deer or a horse? Uh, deer. All right. Mm-hmm. Look at this. A he's, rabbit he's or a goat? <laughs> a rabbit or a goat? <laughs> goat. <laughs> goat? You'd rather have a goat than a rabbit? Well, I oh, think yeah. the, the... size? Would, the size. Yeah, yeah it'd be okay. tough with a rabbit. It's very right. compatible. <laughs> Here's my favorite matchup so far. A dolphin or a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> Two completely di- different types of mammals. Well, if you consider that a dolphin's in the water, right. and you, that's like a natural lube, I guess a dolphin. <laughs> Actually, water is not a... You ever try to fuck a woman in a pool? No. It's dry. It's 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 very difficult. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh. Does that in- influence you at all? Still a dolphin, no. How about Still fucking a, a guy yeah. in a pool? Okay, we're, we're at the final four. We're at the final four. Uh, uh, <laughs> I bet you with those shoes you're wearing, you could fuck a giraffe. I, I've never even considered a dolphin, but now that Richard's talking about it, I can... I can. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Richard, a dog... A bull massive dog or a deer? Deer. This is the final four? Yep. Okay. And a goat or a dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. Dolphin. Wow. Yeah. The really sound. A dolphin. Well, dolphin make that cute little sound. Too. All right. I don't think he'd be making that sound with you on top of him. <laughs> here's no, a final. That sound like that. That sounds good. That says get the fuck away from me. All right. Me. Well, here's your, big, here's your big moment now. Here's your final bracket. Okay. A dolphin or a deer? Well... Dolphins. I thought this was easy for Boy, you. Boy, he's, he's mm. stuck. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this would be so hard. I wouldn't have invented it. Well, you got to think, too. A dolphin would be fun to ride around on in the water. But this yeah. is about sex. But Not after, a long-term relationship. <laughs> no, after yeah, you... Yeah, he's going to marry the dolphin. <laughs> well, you want to cuddle after you're done. So Bambi or Flipper? Come here, Flipper. Um, but deers, like Benji said, are pretty, but they have ticks, like Gary yeah. said. Uh, we'll go with dolphin. All right. If, if, if deer didn't have ticks, would that influence you? I think so, yeah, because yeah, I've had ticks on my private parts before, not from a deer, but right. just from <laughs> being right, out in out the woods. Get out of here, you're disgusting. <laughs> 
Did you we absolutely ha- are disgusting. I got ticks from a possum I was fucking. <laughs> Didn't we once have a guy on who had sex with a dolphin? Uh, we ha- yeah. We have somebody. Sure, yeah. I, you know, if we haven't, it seems like something we, we <laughs> I'm would almost do. sure we did. Yeah. yeah, I think we If we he, haven't, he book a, it right now, Gary. No, no, it was you a know, magazine <laughs> article, and right. we call the guy. That was really a disturbing bracket. Yeah. The fact Frankie. that you invented that is disturbing. <laughs> it's just funny. Right. <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if Sal agrees with you that a, a dolphin is the ultimate because uh, you guys could double team the dolphin. He could, he could fuck the blowhole the blow and then you could be in the vagina. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to go for the mouth. They do have teeth. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're so well thought out. It's impressive. <laughs> wow. Wow. Richard. Yes. When you were a young boy growing up on the farm, did you ever imagine a scenario yeah, that you'd I don't be, know. I, it not only up. working here with Everybody one of your one idols, time. but doing a bracket about fucking <laughs> several of the animals that you grew up with. It's all come full circle. It has. I've, I've arrived uh, with the bestiality bracket. All my dreams have been realized. Bench. To automatically advance to the finals and then win the most annoying staffer bracket. I, I assume you're honored. Well, I'd rather be most than like you know, than the middle annoying, I guess. But uh, just the superlative to have yeah. that. Yeah, I think I'm a really good litmus test. I think kind-hearted, good people actually like me. I think uh, people that have evilness in them or uh, fear of not conforming tend to uh, dislike me. So you think I mean, sometimes I'm sure people just don't like me. But right, but you think it speaks more to the type of person that they are who is judging you as annoying? Or... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I've been annoyed by people that are good people, but uh, yeah, I think if you have a good heart, you like me. Wow, I think that must mean I have a good heart, because I love you. Thanks. What, what do you think? Although Scott loves me, but he might be a little annoyed by me too, so I don't know. Just those shoes are fucking oh, annoying. Really? But he likes me a lot. Yeah, I like him. Yeah, I like Benji. I think he's very funny, and he makes me laugh. But it's like I'm not laughing with him. I'm laughing at him, sort of thing. So wow. it's still good, though. What do you think is your worst quality? If you had to name something about yourself, overweightness, there? sloppiness, skin. I think sometimes maybe uh, sometimes. Yeah, I, I wish my skin was darker, but like I sometimes. Uh, I just there's that. I've told you this before. That monkey, not monkey. He's actually a chimp that everyone didn't like. Who's that chimp? Uh, Planet of the Apes? There's a, there's a chimp that they thought was human. Gary? No, 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 no. Oh. It's like, if you look up on YouTube, this chimp, they've done some documentaries because they thought he was part human, all the other chimps. I, when people are different, there's something, this I mean... This is the part that becomes really annoying with when, Benji. Like when when, he when things it. are different, there's something what are you talking about that people want to destroy it, and it might. I think it has to do with ge- uh, like a genetic advantage because you want your genes to pass on. So if something's a little too different from you, you can fear it and want to destroy it. And I think that has a lot to do with racism and uh, probably uh, probably the homosexuality, like homo thing might have something to do with that. That people get very scared of things that are different and it might be because they want the, inherently their genes to be passed on. So there's something about your genetic makeup that you think rubs people the wrong way? Could be. Or maybe I'm just annoying. I don't know. I don't know.
were a kid, you said I bought a piece of vinyl. No, no. So but I think it's more term. of a I think it's more of a collector thing. Oh. Than a, it's more of a collector thing than a. Uh, yeah. oh, just never heard that before. It's new to me. Okay. So new stuff is good. I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying I never no. heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> You should hear what Lucas said last night. What do you think? Mary goes, uh, Mary goes, we're at dinner. Mary goes, uh, I, I, you know, I heard Howard giving you shit about the foul appearance. And Lucas goes, well, what was he saying? I said, he was saying I was fat, this and that. And Lucas goes, it's just, it's just so funny when he doesn't know the show. He goes, I don't think that's very nice considering all you do for him. <laughs> I was like, just chill out, kid. Look at the roof. He's right. There's nothing nice about the show. <laughs> Let Gary was on the wrap-up show accusing me of being mean to him uh, about his appearance on Jimmy Fallon. I don't give a fuck about his appearance on Jimmy Fallon. I'm just saying he was fat, and he goes, I'm not fat. He doesn't... Did you see his appearance? I have not. Oh. Gary looked heavy. I'm not saying he's obese, but he, he wore a shirt that was ill-fitting, and his Whoa. belly and tits were, like, kind of apparent. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you, if you wear your jacket, it covers it up. You are, you're heavy. But you, you say you don't give a fuck about me on Jimmy Fallon, but then you spend 15 minutes talking about how awful well, it is. So you clearly do give a fuck. Well, you're on my show. You're my no, executive No, but you just producer. said I don't give a fuck about How many Gary? executive producers of, of, uh, of, a, of a, a radio show or television show are on, uh, on a Fallon appearance? I got Ronnie on the—he's um, uh, he, busy in Jamaica on his uh, appearances. I got you. So how could I not keep tabs on this? You guys are out there representing oh, my I, show. I didn't say—you just said you don't give a fuck about it. I don't. But you do. No, I don't. Well, then why'd you talk about it? Because it's interesting to my audience. So I don't so give a fuck. I wouldn't watch that if I I do it for my audience. They want to know, hey, Howard, what did you think of Gary's appearance on Fallon? I wouldn't watch that. Why wouldn't you watch it? Because I don't care about it. About what? About, about you on Jimmy Fallon. Oh. No, I just want well, to make sure. he wouldn't be on Jimmy Fallon, though. If right, of course. <laughs> I'm aware of that. So I, so I know my audience is going to say, hey, you know, some of the things I watch, I watch because it's part of pop culture. And it's certainly part of our culture. Uh, you know 20 people call in and go, hey, what'd you think of Gary on uh, Jimmy Fallon? And I go, well, okay, let me take a look at this. So here's what I thought. You know, I think you're a good conversationalist. I like that. I said your, your, your shirt was wrinkled and you look slovenly. Do you think you look appropriate? Yes, I think you can watch a lot of shows where guys don't wear jackets. A lot of talk shows yeah, where men I, come I, on. You needed a jacket. Well, that's your opinion. Yeah, that's all I'm giving is my opinion. <laughs> I don't know why why that's so controversial. It's not controversial, it's just were negative. You supposed to give it is negative. What I mean, do you want me to lie and say you look good? You don't. You look terrible. I think I think mostly when it comes to me it's nothing but negative opinion. No. I just said your conversation was very good. Well, you, you really know, didn't because you said cuz then you you keyed no, in the on, story you, keyed you, in told... on, you keyed in on one line of a 6-minute interview. But what do you want me to do? Okay, I don't know. Just say the, it. I, the first story was good. I've about, heard the you one about that you? before, and I like that. No, the one about getting guests. Yeah, about the, us, the show. About the show. That right. was a good story. Then you started promoting your new program on VH1 Classic, about, uh, and you started to talk about pieces of vinyl, right. Quest Love, and I think you just you lose everybody. It was boring. It was boring. But it's boring to and you. And Jimmy Fallon checked out. Oh, please. Uh, it's you my can't opinion. say that. What are you talking about? What do you mean Jimmy Fallon checked out? <laughs> he liked it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, what do you want from me? I'm telling you that shirt was ill-fitting. Right. And you look slovenly. Right. That's an opinion. Yeah. Well, how was he mean to you? Well, Robin, do you, do, do you think it was a positive review? <laughs> yeah. Come on, no, wait, hold on, Robin. <laughs> yes. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> really? Yeah, so she you you embarrass was, yourself. I think you say shut the fuck up. No, but you embarrass yourself by saying that. He said you were. He, he, he was he, interested he, 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 in what you had to say. Yeah. It's a talk show. What did, what, I just I, think it's ridiculous that you're trying to relate to the public. You talk about pieces of vinyl and that fucking Well, jukebox. maybe I'm relating to that public yeah. that cares about it. The, the public that cares about records is small, but yeah. okay, fine. Just call them records. Okay. That's what they are. When did you become this? Uh, uh, well, Jimmy, uh, I have over 4,000 pieces of vinyl. And uh, Questlove, I understand you. How many pieces of vinyl do you have? And then he answered. He didn't go. 70, he, he said, Questlove didn't go. What the fuck's a piece of yeah, vinyl? He, when does Questlove have anything to say? From time to time. He's not going to sit there and get into a dialogue <laughs> with you about, hey, jackass, wh why don't you call him records? He's not going to be mean. <laughs> well, that's your job. By the way, that outfit looks nice today that you're wearing. Thank you.
It would have been great for Jimmy Fallon okay. with the jacket. All right. Well, anyway, that's my opinion. Listen, I, I really watched it because it's a topic that the audience was asking me about on Twitter. Did you watch Gary? Did you watch Gary? Oh, I'm not I asking why you. I, of course, I would think you might. So watch I watched it. it. I'm not. I'm not looking to get on you. What do, I'm not. He's what do I care? I think. I think it's. Uh, it's hard to find. It's more fun to make fun of me than it is to say a positive no, thing about me. I said something positive. That story you told, right, you told one, very well. A, and you said nine things negative. Yes. In, in all in all, it's generally a negative review. I said three things negative. <laughs> I always like to look at the positive. I, the positive was you told a very good story about how difficult it was to get guests when we worked at the NBC building, and you told it well. That's all. I don't know what you want from me. You screwed up when you walked over. To, you you didn't realize how to walk to the couch. I, that's true. That was hysterical. Okay. He there's two ways to walk. He walked the wrong way. <laughs> Secondly, you look slovenly. Mm -hmm. And told uh, the boring story. And you told the boring story with and pieces, pieces of vinyl. Of vinyl. So well, I'm co I'm combining okay. those into three negatives. Thanks. And the positive was you told a great story about getting guests. How is that overwhelmingly negative? <laughs> you're a funny dude. That's not overwhelmingly you're, negative. You're a funny man. The appearance, you, a jacket you can improve on, it's simple. Your clothing. If you don't see it as overwhelmingly negative, you then, you, then you're blind. But that's okay. I mean, I just think you're not seeing it. I don't see it as overwhelmingly negative. Do you see it as when positive? Looks... Overwhelmingly negative is goofing on you when you went on Jimmy Kimmel and threw that ball and right. you couldn't even fucking throw a ball to Got the that. guy. That Got... was negative. Got that? That was ridiculous. I understand. And I knew how upset you were about it, so I laid off you. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Go back and listen. I did. I felt for you. But this is stuff you can improve. You can certainly call records records, not pieces of vinyl. And I, be I believe you will start calling records records. I what? do. I think he's sometimes I do. Sometimes it I doesn't do. relate to an audience. They don't know what you're talking it's about. It's ridiculous, nitpicky, right. dumbass thing. All right. Well, that's why I've gotten nowhere in life. I didn't say you got nowhere. I think everything through. Gary's very pleased with the appearance. I can't hear you. <laughs> she I really can't. Talk can't. Over this. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow, where's this from? I've never heard this before. The Bowie anthem. I love it. Wow. Who is that, Fred? Hold on one second. Fabulous. Psych. Yeah, oh, he's so good. That's amazing. Wow. Yes, Robin, I was pleased with the appearance. I was. You didn't have any criticism of yeah. it at all. I wish I would have found the desk easier, but other than that, <laughs> I, think, other than that I think it was a positive right. experience. Good. Well, then we think that, too. Are those clothes you're wearing or pieces of cotton? I'm wearing a pant. I'm wearing How a many set pieces of cotton I'm wearing a set of pants. How many pieces of cotton do you own? You're so silly. No, that's what I'm saying. It's the same thing. Who calls a record pieces of vinyl? I never heard that. And I said to Gary this morning, this is what started this. Uh -huh. I t said to Gary, Gary, honestly, I mean, we're off the air. Who calls a record pieces of vinyl? When well, did I didn't call a record. I called a collection. A pieces of vinyl. I said, I said, I, I said Gary, and this it's was not, not an unheard, the air. It's not an unheard of expression. Can, I, that the first time I've heard of it but, is from you. But on the wrap-up show yesterday, several people called who said, of course they've heard that expression before. I think they're So appeasing. because you haven't heard it, it couldn't have possibly existed. I didn't say that. I said I've never, ever heard anyone refer to a record as a piece of vinyl. I didn't refer to a record. It's a collection. Okay. I've never heard anyone Understood. refer to a collection other of pieces have. of vinyl. Other people have. When did you begin calling records pieces of vinyl? I don't know, probably years ago. I mean, years ago. So you said, oh, I have this many pieces yeah, of Yeah, I think I and have. where did you hear this term the first time? Do you have any recollection? I don't. Do I don't. I, I could make up a lie, but yeah. I don't have okay. an answer. All right. So somewhere along the line, you heard this. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't write it. 
That isn't your term? No. You heard somebody say how many pieces of vinyl? Several people called the wrap-up show yesterday who said okay, they heard I'm it. Asking so, so I'm asking you. Yes. I understand several I did not people. Make I'm up talking the term. to you. I, I did not make up the term. That's the question. <laughs> pieces of vinyl. How many files of digital do you have? I have many digital files. How many files of digital do you have? Thousands. That's how we refer to it in the collecting community. Files of digital. No, I, it started because I, I questioned Gary and he gets angry with me. He thinks I'm goofing on him. Well, you are goofing on me. I didn't well, start on, out goofing. Said, I said, Gary, I've never heard the expression pieces of vinyl. And you're and goofing on And then you jumped on, down my throat because you said, oh, oh, both so you're many goofing on me. the wrap up show. I don't not, think, I don't think you're heard, goofing on me. You're I goofing wasn't on me. this morning. I was really curious. I said, where did this expression come from? Pieces of vinyl. And I explained it to you, but, the, but it was apparently annoying to you. It's like me looking at my hair. Going, an, How many pieces of hair do I there's have? There's an explanation that you don't care to understand. So no, it's fine. I, I, I heard the explanation. I don't accept it. Exactly. Right. We Sounds agree silly. to disagree. Does anybody else think this is silly, Fred? I, I'm personally. Have you ever I, heard pieces of vinyl? I'm, and I'm trying to be honest here. I've never heard that expression until right. Gary said it. I, I'm not saying I, that he's wrong. Right. I would have used the term either yeah. albums or records. Yeah, I said, but hey, I've never I mean, called my collection. Why would you call pieces? records pieces of vinyl? Like, wouldn't you just go? I mean, I, I could. Explain, like, I, I you want the explanation? Vinyl, like, there's vinyl flooring. Right. It's a, it could be a thousand Siding. pieces of vinyl flooring mixed in with my records. Right. Yeah, but That's I mean, they've always is, been Fred. called records. Why do you need a new name for them? I don't know. It's like a fancy... It sounds a little pretentious, Yeah, personally. Okay, pieces fine. of vinyl. I'll, 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 I'll take that from Fred. It sounds a good. little pretentious. Well, but it's gee, not... It's he's not... awfully negative. <laughs> what is your favorite piece of vinyl, by the way? Mine is a Sergeant Pepper. 50 Ways to Rank Your Mother. That's my favorite piece of vinyl. That's your favorite? Do you yes, own that? I do. All right, so you have, that's your favorite piece of vinyl. It's one of them. See, now you're being sarcastic. <laughs> I am? Yeah. I thought I was just being honest. Yeah, all right. Well, you're not being honest because I'm asking you about pieces of vinyl and you're not being honest. Sergeant Pepper's is my favorite piece of vinyl. Does that sound weird to you, or would it, would it, would it be more no. would it be more relevant if I said my favorite it, record is is uh, Sergeant a, Pepper? Again, it refers to a collection, okay. not. A, but right. again, you just want to do what you want to do, so but, go do it. I, my question is, if you walked into a store and said, "I would like to buy a piece," no, I would say I want to buy a record. But when you're talking no, about a collection, say piece of vinyl. I might say, you might say, "How many pieces of vinyl do you have in the store?" Because it's oh, records and forty fives. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> and, the, and the guy will beat you up. <laughs> That's all you got out of the Fallon appearance, just that one line? No, 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 no. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. About that. That's all I you got. That, that wasn't a critique of the Fallon appearance. I've heard you say it pieces was. of vinyl here and right. on your and new on show. And on your show. You know. Do you refer to your teeth as teeth or pieces of ivory? <laughs> pieces of ivory. <laughs> pieces of, how many pieces of ivory? 32. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you sure it's just 32. <laughs> it seems like more. Uh, all right, anyway, no, congratulations. On I'm what? I'm sorry. On what? On your Jimmy Fallon appearance. You were the best. I didn't say you were bad. I just asked why you couldn't find your chair. It seemed pretty easy to why me. Why I couldn't find my chair? Why I'm a big fat pig? Why no, I dress like I didn't shit? say you were a fat pig. Why I tell pig. a bad story except the for the shirt, good story, the one the good story. The shirt didn't fit you well. And you know what? On my early Letterman appearances, I wish somebody would have said to me, hey, you don't look good. Your clothing is is uh, not working for you. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying you're a fat piece of shit. I never called you a piece of I shit. I just said... A fat slob. You just I say did, I'm slob. You say I'm slob. Well, I take that back. I You looked heavy to me in that mm, shirt. Okay. You know, you know. Again, I was saying to you this morning. One of the points I was making is, you know, I got up the next morning. You go on Twitter so you get to, everyone right. to tell you how horrible you are in every way. Right. And of the many critiques I got, the shirt or the heaviness was not any. All right. And I got well, many mine was original. Many critiques. All right. Well. Would you take the word of a fashion consultant? No, he won't. He doesn't listen to anybody. He's convinced I, that he looked sure, good. Sure, Robin. Okay. Because right. maybe we'll have it analyzed. Mm. And you'll see that Ge Howard is actually trying to help. Thank you, Robin. I am. I mean, uh, you know what it is? Gary's used to on that show being next to John Hine, who's the size of an elephant. <laughs> so he, he thinks he's skinny now. Compared to John, you're thin. He's Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, oh Gary's my. Bradley Cooper. He's, what, Bradley Cooper? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm thin. Look at John Hine. I am of I'm average I'm weight. Well, average weight. I am of average weight. You look roly poly to me. <laughs> and that's do, do you understand that sometimes clothing can make you look heavy? Sure. Yeah. John's got to lose a couple of pounds. 
I heard he was a little hurt that not hurt, but he was disappointed he, he was. didn't get asked on Jimmy Fallon. He was because John and I had done a bunch of press together, and they pitched us to Fallon, and he wasn't on, and he I, he was bummed. Yeah, I understand. We do the show together, right? John Hines, superstar. What are you going to do? Did it cause a rift between you two? No, not no. at all. I, in fact, I called him before I accepted the appearance to tell him what was going on. He thought it was best for the show. He's, he's, he's yeah, a John's guy. a reasonable guy. That's why I like John. He's not an asshole. He's not. No, absolutely not. Oh, God, what critique would that have been? Oh, John? <laughs> oh. John's got to lose weight. I've told him a million times, but John doesn't care. Gary gets all bummed out when I say it. He starts fighting with me. John's like, yeah, I know I do. Listen, I got to lose a couple, too. I don't think you do. I do. You haven't seen me with my shirt off. I'm sloppy. I, I know it. I'm harder on myself than you could ever be. I know what I look like. I'm a fucking mess. Oh, I'm not saying I'm good looking or thin or anything. Yeah, I'm you're, saying... you're, that shirt made you look heavy. When you were sitting... Uh, but, but hold on. Let's talk by about the way, you for I'm not second. the only person who said it. It's just that these people won't come on the air and That's say fine. it. That's fine. All right. That's fine. But I don't think you're fat. Thank you. And but you I, you always think you're... I'm you're... sloppy. I'm not fat. But, but I mean... Titties and I got a belly. How many guys your age are tight? I don't use that Should as an he excuse. Accept that? No, right. I'm just saying it's hard to do. And you work harder than anybody at it. Yeah, not so hard. I've been lame lately. What can I do? But I'm down on myself. You know, I'll give you a private look at my stomach. You'll see what I'm talking oh, about. I'd will? like to br I'd like to haul you into a room and let you see me, <laughs> oh, nude. <man. laughs> It's weird when Gary was on Fallon. I thought they there was I, I didn't recognize Gary right away, and I thought it was uh, they were promoting the Biggest Loser. Oh, you know, <laughs> those people lose weight. Oh dear. Uh, nah, you were fine. What am I going to tell you? You know what I mean? It was good. It was a good appearance. I just had a couple of point pointers that I thought could have helped you, but you're taking it the wrong way. So. What well, you I don't do? take you. Oh, you also don't take critiques that well. I don't like, need critiques. I'm hard enough. I'm just saying you're, when, you're in love with yourself. When people like when you get a news report, and somebody talks yeah. about how you did something on the show. You don't take well to it. Uh, well, if it's if it's true, I take well to it. But very rarely is it true. Exactly. In the media media almost, lies. Almost never true. <laughs> almost never true. All right. Thank you, thank Gary. You. Good luck with your TV show. One can only hope it's canceled. <laughs> so uh, so the people here can get back to work. What? Who's going to cover Beats I'm not looking vinyl. for you to be on uh, VH1 Classic. I, I need an executive producer. That's what I'm looking for. Anytime you're working on VH1 Classic, I'd rather have you here. So my vacation that weekends, I, my vacation weekends, which is when we shot that. All right. That's you know, fair we, enough. So, we, I mean, we really went out of our way to shoot. I mean, I, I shot my July vacation. It's just I, I would prefer having a full-time executive producer, and then takes some downtime with his family and relaxes. So that's me selfishly. Right. That means I like you. doesn't mean I hate you. No, I think it's, it means you want what you want for you. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what I want for me. But, but, but like, you're working on that's on right. your time off, too. And I'm just saying, I, I would like to be able to do what I want on my own time. Well, you who control, stopped you? Well, you are. You're saying no, I I'm don't. No, I'm not. You just said. I just said I prefer you didn't have another show. Right. I didn't tell you not to do it, did I? No, you didn't, but you said I prefer it, but, but you, what else would you prefer I not do while I'm on vacation? I prefer that when you're on vacation, you take a vacation, relax, and if you find yourself with the urge to work, you work on our show. That's what I would prefer if you, if you have that urge. That's all. Mm -hmm. How, is that too much to say? No. All right. All right. That's all. That's my wish. Doesn't mean you have to comply. He walks out so defeated. <laughs> Mr. Del Bate. Yes. How seriously do you take Howard's criticism in, in the sense that he's saying, work on my show and nothing else? I'm well, I, I take it very seriously. I, ta I take this job very seriously. So, of course, when he says stuff like that, I take it seriously. Will this mark the end of your outside appearances, you know, for what it's worth, you know, promoting? No, but it will mark the beginning of a discussion that, Howard, I should probably have off the air, a more sensible discussion where it doesn't get on the air. Because talking to Howard on the air is different. It's just, it's just harder to have a real discussion. You know, you've done outside appearances in the past. He's mocked some of them, but in a different way. Do you think the volume of outside appearances, like he was just mentioning with, you know, with Ronnie, with, with even Lisa, or be, things attached I, I, to the show... What? Probably. 
I can't answer what anybody else does. I can only answer for myself. But are, are you a little resentful of the fact that other people are doing all these appearances and kind of compromising yours? I mean, you're at the top of the food. I don't chain. think that what they do should compromise what I do. I just, I'm about, I, I am dealing with myself, so I can't decide what other people are doing or should be doing. The other thing I wanted to ask you about was, uh, did you look back once more at your Fallon appearance and sort of critique your shirt? Did you did you agree with any of Howard's criticism of your physical appearance? I thought I looked okay. I did not think I looked stunning, nor did I look fat and slovenly. I looked okay. If you could go back in time, regardless of Howard's criticism, would you have changed your shirt, looking at it a second? No, I like that shirt. I would have kept that shirt. I think that shirt looks good. Hey, by the way, uh, before you, did you watch the... Um did you watch any of the video? I, it's mostly visual. Did you watch the stuff from the uh, Jamaica trip? The, the weirdest, the weirdest thing is fucking Stephanie. You know, Ronnie didn't get there, so Stephanie's on stage. Stephanie's doing the show now. She was Ronnie because Ronnie was a day late, and, and she's doing a poem. And it was like long and weird. I, I, I put the poem on. Okay. Towards the end, she says, "You know, maybe one day he'll make me his wife." <laughs> I like she, if she's lucky. You know what that's like? <laughs> I, I, I gotta think of a better analogy because she's dead and she's sort of a Satan now, but it's like if you pay to see McCartney, although Ronnie's not McCartney and you got Linda McCartney. Yeah, but right. that's not even right because Ronnie's no Paul McCartney. Right, right. <laughs> well, everyone's got these projects. I've got superstars surrounding me. I'm looking for somebody who isn't a superstar. I turned on the news yesterday. Oh, every, every, every newscast I hear is Lisa G's book. You better buy Lisa G's book or... <laughs> or, um, or or we'll never stop hearing about it. I go, what, what, what is, what, what, do we have anybody here who just kind of does the show? <laughs> or am I nuts? And Ronnie's block party going to Jamaica? Mm. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, that's getting out of hand. With Beetlejuice and, oh my God. That was like an extravaganza. Meanwhile, Ronnie was with me at America's Got Talent. Then he had to jet off to get to this fucking island that they were on. And then until Ronnie got there, Stephanie, Ronnie's girlfriend, was running the block party. I'm like, was people she? paid for this? And I, I know what some. Do you mean she I, was running the block. I have party? nothing to do with this block party, and yet my name is sort of, of obviously attached to it. It's everyone from the Howard Stern show. So I'm sure the fans think I'm somehow involved or give my blessing to this thing. I fucking hate it. Excuse all my profanity, but I, it does piss me off. Well, and, it's appropriate to the block party. And now I guess Ronnie's girlfriend was in charge of the block party until Ronnie could get there, and she was up there reading poems. Oh, really? She's all right, like so Lucy. I, what? She's like Lucy, yeah. Daddy, I want to yeah. go to the show. <laughs> Wah. I want to be in the show. Come on, Ricky. I want to be on the show. All right, honey. You can go. What's the matter? I don't know. I don't either. I, I I don't know. You're carrying on about yeah. me now. Block what party. did I do? I hate it. I was there. I was there. I worked with you, and then I left. Yeah, I know. That's fine. That part was fine. But okay. Then, like Stephanie's. I just no. Hate the here's block what party. happened. I here's, hate it. I hate here's it. Here's what happened. Could you let me talk? <laughs> here's what happened. The block party was scheduled from Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. It already Jamaica. annoys me. Okay. <laughs> I was with you working. We right. had we had like a little comedy show. Set up for uh, Thursday night. Right. So Stephanie had gone down on Wednesday with uh, some people, like a promoter guy and Richie from Howard TV to right. shoot it, and right. Rachel and all that. Okay. Yeah. So. So now she's part of this I, traveling circus. My no, I, this was this was not my idea. It was my promoter's idea. My promoter. <laughs> to have to have her. Oh my, what a nightmare. My promoter, Sequoia. Yeah. Well, let's let's end. When is the block party going to be done? Officially? Well, we're booked up till December already. Good. And let's and let's end it after that. Okay. Why That's enough. Have, why? Because why I hate it, be like and it, it's, it's a reflection on me, and stop using all my guys. I'm not Get using your own show. I stopped that. Enough of using me. I told me. you I stopped it. Good. Enough with the block party. Let's surely go back to doing his comedy show. You don't need to be doing that. 
What am I doing? Well, I'm doing is hosting with JD. What am I doing? I just don't want my name associated with this shit. It's terrible. It's not your name. It's Ronnie Munn Block Party. Yeah, I know. It has nothing to do with me. I didn't... It looks like I've... I, I don't know any other show that has this. I'm talking about television or radio. I can't name one. I thought you would like it. I hate it. The people loved it. The, the I don't people care what the we people had doctors, loved. lawyers, I dentists couldn't care. There. I couldn't care less what people the people People came loved. from Canada saying how great it is yeah. to you know, have people come down, <laughs> Good. hang out. I, I would prefer I this little it. ancillary business. I don't get business. you, man. I really don't. I don't like the business off my radio show. But when I don't put together things like this for a reason. In other words, I could have years ago put together a oh, traveling I, circus. I know that. I don't do it because I've got a tremendous pride in what I do. I didn't bargain for this Ronnie Block party. It's a it's a nightmare. Why is it? I, I don't because it's an embarrassing I don't, I don't reflection why on it's me. A nightmare. It's a reba- an embarrassing reflection on me. Huh? I don't want a Ronnie Block party on my show. I don't like it. Okay. I don't. Uh, then we're done. At the end of the year. All right. Oh, you're killing him. Mm. Well, who cares if I'm killing him? He <laughs> makes a great living you. being a, a doing. I, I, I gave him a, a limo job. I have him a security job. I don't know what he I wants from me. I didn't say it wasn't. I, I know do, you want I to do be it famous. On my own, I do it on my own time. I do it on my own time. Everybody here's got a, an ancillary business, <laughs> a, a side freak show off the business here. The show is the thing, not the Ronnie Block party. Well, I thought that was part of the show, kind of. J.D., I don't even think J.D. got any sleep on Sunday night. Came in here all fucking hang dog. That's my fault? <laughs> Whose fault is it? Mine? He, we left at 11 o'clock in the morning. How could he not get any sleep? I don't know. We got here, and I think he went right straight to work, and that was the end of it. Who needs that? I don't need it. I need a guy f- fresh and bushy-tailed for work. Work! I was here first thing in the morning yesterday. No, I know you were. I made sure we left early, made sure we got back. What happened? Your girlfriend now is the Ronnie Block party? No, I just told you what happened. She got up and read a poem. Listen to this poem. Oh, no. All right, so I got a little surprise for you guys. Who's paying for this? What did people pay to see (laughs) Stephanie read a poem? They, had, they loved it. I'm they loved you. it. I'm telling they you, loved they it. loved the whole weekend. They loved that. They had a blast. I'm sure they did. They, they got had to hang out with people time. from the Howard Stern radio show. So what's? why is that bad? Uh, because I don't want to be responsible for it. But nothing, we didn't do anything bad. I, I don't know what you do. We I had don't a, want we, to be, we had, I'm we had not, a, it's not my, I don't want anything to do with we it. We ate dinner with the people. Yeah, we, I don't care. We sat at the pool go, with them. Go call someone up and have dinner with them. <laughs> be my guest. I don't, I don't get it, man. All right. I mean, God. The guys who work under you, like like um, uh, Terry, right. Terry the driver. Right. How about he starts going out and having Terry the driver parties? Okay. And then it reflects on you, and you don't know what's going on. All right. You, you follow? I follow. I you follow. want to be responsible for that? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm not responsible for you. We're not doing anything bad. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know these promoters. I don't know anything about it. It's not under my control. I have nothing to do with it. I know that. Remember the SEC came after me and I had nothing to do with it? Well, me too. But guess what? They came after me. And me also. Right. I don't want to be, I don't want to hear about the Ronnie Block Party. It's crazy. Ronnie Block. Robin, what do you think of this? Well, I hear what you're saying, and I understand that. I don't know how this all started. And I don't know how it became this big, either. I don't know. Shuli, you know, Shuli, I guess, has stand-up. Right. Which he always did. Yeah, but he was always involved with a group of people that were involved with... Yeah, and then, with it morphed, and, then it, and then that somehow fell apart. There was a falling out, and then they latched onto the idea of Ronnie's block party. No, they didn't latch on. What? They didn't latch on. I yeah, mean, they latched on. They it was latched on to an idea. They got stupid, the, they, it was Scott the engineer's idea. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, every I'm bad idea comes anymore. from Scott, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, king of all blacks. You know, I would, you got to stop that black party. I'll go, go no sweep shit. the streets, will no. you please? You, 
Listen, you and your big listen, mouth. I don't understand. Maybe I we should stop your you shit mean? show it because nobody listens to that crap. I think we did stop what it. Are you Good. About? No, we didn't stop it. Something it's happened. It's done, man. It. You don't realize it. It's done. Something. You're over. Let me. Yeah, what's your I'm point over. of view on this? What, I mean, what is, first of all, you know what pisses me off? What does a girl have to do with it? Why does she sit home? Why does she sit home? <laughs> yeah, she gotta, well, I don't know what, 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 what this is. Sit home. Yeah, sit home. Sit home. You do, do something else. You don't have to be involved with in what I'm doing. Mind your business. I would tell my wife that. Yeah, your wife. You can lock her in a goddamn closet and eat on a... You fucking lick her feet. Weirdo. Friggin' weirdo. Yeah? Is it, hey, King Wilbox, didn't you ask to be on the block party? Oh, he begged, man. He begged. I begged you? You begged. I got the word that you begged to be on the block party. Oh, you're full of shit, man. I ain't never begged somebody in my life. Yeah, right. Yeah, you begged your daddy for all the money you got. So what? I uh, so it's, what? It's, yeah, it's, so it's, what? It's so annoying. Anyway, here's Ronnie's girlfriend at the blog party reading Please. a poem. Can I go? I got to go bring a guest. Go in. ahead. Since Ronnie loves his poems, I wrote one of my own. <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> <clears throat> I was bartending way with plans in my hand. Sorry, I already fucked it up again. All right. Let me start that shit. She's obviously learning uh, the cursing from Ronnie. Right. This is the way you address the block party crowd. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was bartending away with my plans in hand. Then suddenly intruded this man. When he makes me laugh, he brings me to tears. So what if there's 33 years? <laughs> Instead of dreams of a wild bachelorette for life, it turned into dreams of a partner for life. <laughs> As he wooed me with his mysterious woman whispering ways, they engulfed me and I knew I would always have a place to stay. I didn't think Ronnie's poetry could be made worse. <laughs> Somebody could do worse than him. <laughs> We're really not all that risque. Suddenly I missed the poem Winter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems to be our forte to seem that way. I fucked that line up too, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I Dutch oven him all the time. Right, right. <laughs> Ronnie doesn't understand why I want this stopped. Oh my goodness. It's just it's it's nothing I really approve of. You know. Well, it's hard to tell you don't approve. I really don't. Well, I understand that, but when you've got the the video cameras following you around, right? Yeah, and you know you get to promote it on the show. It doesn't seem like you don't approve. Yeah, maybe if I stop mm. all the promotion. I mean, yesterday I tuned in. I hear Ronnie's block party, Lisa G's book, there's a couple other things, Gary's TV show. Who else do we have? It's endless. The only guy I'm suddenly not angry with is Benji. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Somehow he, him, him I like. He's probably thinking up something right now to piss you off. Yeah, how, how come he can't come up with something to piss me off? <laughs> suddenly he's the model employee. Yeah, well, this is my own doing. I kind of like it. Whenever somebody asks me, like, hey, can we go do this? And I go, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say no. But, you know, other shows, they don't have access. Like, like Letterman's organization, y you can't get to Letterman to even ask him. The, 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 you know, Rod Burnett is the acting prick, and he goes, fuck you. Are you crazy? You're on the you David Letterman are show. coming up and saying, I want to be uh, on the Biff block party. Yeah, I want to no. the Biff block party. No, they're afraid to. But around here, everyone has access to me, and they're like, hey, do you care? And then I, and I'm like this nice guy that goes, yeah, I guess it's okay. You know. I mean, surely going out and doing stand-up on his own time, I don't care. And, you know, and, and, and all the promotion that goes on and go see this one and that one. I'm going to stop it all. You know, it's enough. It's too much. Right? If you don't like it. Yeah, but, and like, I shouldn't even, like, Letterman doesn't have this in his day. Like, he just goes to work. And everyone shits their pants when he shows up. 
I'm trying to get like a Rob Burnett type to do that for me. You want Gary to be the Rob Burnett, but Gary has projects. <laughs> right. Ga how can Gary tell people no? As soon as he sees an opportunity, he plunks right into it. I, I, listen, Howard, I would just say one thing, and I'm not trying to... You know, Rob's off doing movies and TV shows Yeah, I know, as, I know. As well. I know. I know. But he's not on Letterman promoting it. I noticed Dave didn't uh, have him on as a guest. If, did you follow that? Uh, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You guess or you know? I know Dave didn't have him on. Yeah, Dave didn't even show up at the fucking premiere of that movie. He didn't want anything to do with it. But I know he was on, like, CBS early show. He wasn't yeah, on a lot of yeah, the shows. Yeah, exactly. And guess who didn't like it? Dave. Hmm. Our airwaves are cluttered with fucking projects. <laughs> you know? But it's always been this way. I know. I'm changing it, though. Today. Today, the new rule right. is... See, I shouldn't even have to make the new rule. Like, that's my executive producer's job. He should be cleaning all this shit up. And I should be like, oh, this is terrible what Gary's doing. <laughs> I have a new project for everyone if they want to be in on it. It's called The Howard Stern Show. Oh, boy, that's so boring. <laughs> Why should we just be involved in that? Uh, yes, Manny, you're on the air. Good morning, everybody. Hey. <laughs> uh, two things real quick. Um, Gary definitely sounds pretentious, and I, I don't have, I don't call my CD collection 600 pieces of plastic. <laughs> oh, you should. <laughs> I mean, I, I think How I'm many pieces of plastic do you have? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go home and count. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I also have uh, 496 individual files on my iPod as well. <laughs> nice. Yes, so. Thank you, Robin, Manny. Robin, come back to the studio, please. All right. All right, as soon as she can. I uh, I didn't even want to talk about this. I, I have so many other things to talk about, Robin. Uh, yeah, it got started because I guess you and Gary got into it over yeah. pieces, pieces of, of vinyl. vinyl. Crazy, right? You know, we talk so much about how, you know, that pretentious language pops up, like the radio language, and then he goes out and does it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to be a collector of records, which I think is fine, you know, if you want to do that, but... Mm -hmm. Don't come up with your special lingo. Pieces of vinyl. <laughs> How many pieces of vinyl do you own? I mean, it's ridiculous. And then when I challenge him on it, he gets mad at me. Hey, Robin, you want to talk about pretentious? Let's get fucking vegetated. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's so <You're> hurt. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's angry with us. I know. <laughs> She doesn't go around saying, uh, how many pieces of vegetables did I eat today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would this be a good time to start planning the final eight months of, of the no. party in extravagant no. fashion? I mean, December, really, the really last show is today. over and that's it. Goodbye. Okay? I'm not planning anything. We're booked till the end of the year. It's greatly upset. Oh, stop with no, your yeah, fucking you're, words, you're man. What is so wrong with you? Right now. Why is the block party so important to you? It's not. I don't give a shit. I'll if cancel it right now. They can cancel every date. I don't care. Okay, let's do it. Go ahead. Let's do it. What are you doing? What, what do you got to do with it? You clearly it? don't mean that. It's important. Cancel to it right now. The block party is, is part Four of Four sold out shows in Boston in two weeks. It's Let in your cancel. blood, Mr. I, Mon. Cancel them all. Go ahead. I don't give a fuck. Ronnie, what will you do with all this... Ronnie, what will you do with all this spare time, with all these free weekends? Have fun with my girlfriend. Ronnie, the last question, real quick. Has Howard given you enough? Like he said, he gave you a job, a, a, a business. A, I guess he hasn't given living. you enough because you're breaking my balls. No, you haven't given me enough. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you shit. No, but uh, why? I haven't you, give, I'm not giving you shit. Why do you yearn for more on the weekends? Hasn't he given you enough? I, hey, listen, we like doing it. I have a good time. If it's over, it's over. Fine. In your opinion, is there oh any way God, this can be saved? Oh, my God, he goes on and on. He doesn't stop. Can, you, can this party be saved? Or is this party over? Go and ask him. Go ahead. Walk in, in there, big opinion. shot. No, no, no be a big shot. Let me see what a big shot you are. 
Go in there, you're the, you're the interviewer here. Go in there and ask him if the fucking thing is really over. Well, Ronnie, that would, Go be, ahead. That would be silly. Why would it be silly? Because he's in the middle of being on the air. You're not on the but air. But he's right. talking about me and my block party. You're supposed to be interviewing me about that. And that's what I'm doing. Well, you're trying to get the full... Why would I go in the studio you're trying to get the full scoop. You. No, you're trying to get the full scoop. I'm trying to get your opinion. Is it really over? Go Don't ask him. Try to bait go me ask him if it's really Mr. over. Mr. Mundall, okay. every time. All right, goodbye. Let me ask... It's over. Can I... Go I ahead, just want to no. I want to elaborate on something Greg said earlier because I don't know if you got the question. Greg was saying, if the block party is going to end in December, yes. why not between now and then just do huge extravaganzas and really make it count? Because we have shows booked all the way to the end of the year, and I'm doing one a month, and that's it. I'm not adding any more on. The, sh the shows that we have booked already till the end of the year are all pretty, pretty big venues, so I'm happy with it, and that's it. So. If it's over in December, it's over. Omarosa's stopping by. Omarosa. Omarosa from... Uh, Omarosa. From, uh, she's on Celebrity Apprentice <laughs> this year. She likes her name pronounced correctly. How do you say it? Omarosa. Omarosa? Yes. No, it's Omarosa. No, no? it's not. Mm -hmm. Omarosa? How do you know Omarosa. that? Omarosa. Omarosa. <laughs> All right, good. Omarosa's stopping by. I heard her saying it one day, and it was like, I'm Omarosa. <laughs> it's... Uh, that's pretty pretentious. Even her name is like an issue. <laughs> Omarosa stopping by, so uh, we'll be talking to her and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, first, these words. Listen to this. Good morning, Omarosa. Hi. So you're back. I love coming here. I really, really do. What is it about Howard that intrigues you and that, and that keeps you coming back? He's a great interviewer. I mean, he's candid, he's real, he's down to earth, he's funny, and um, I'm looking forward to it. What are you expecting from today's interview? I think he's going to ask me to show him my boobs again, which I won't. Probably ask to have sex with me again. I won't. And it'll probably go like that for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you've already made up your mind. Neither of those two things will be happening. Not going to happen. <laughs> but fun will be had. No, it, it it's a great time. It's like a party in the morning. So, hi, Howard. All right, we'll see you in the studio. Bye. So strange. Okay. Hard O, Omarosa. Oh, and I said, how do you pronounce your last name? And she says, we don't. Oh. I'm Omarosa. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I think she's, that's funny. She's like, you know. So she's in the process. Why, I'm going to ask her, why don't you find your last name? Hey, guess who's here? Omarosa. It's not Omarosa. It's Omarosa. Hard O. I've been corrected. Yeah. Omar, Omarosa. Hey, Omarosa. Hi. Look at you. Nice outfit. There she is. Omarosa. Oh, yeah, hey, Rob Robin. Robin Hi, corrected me. It's Omarosa. Oh, yeah, hard O. You look good. I'm trying to keep up. That's yeah, right. why not? You look real nice. <laughs> Very good. You uh, you look different to me. Something, I do? Yeah, maybe the hair is different. Yeah. or I, I added know. a little longer weave this trip, Robin. Yeah. 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 You, look, you look in shape. You look glam. Thank Arms you. Arms look toned. I'm spinning. Your real chest or fake? No. How are we covered this last time I was here? They're I real, right? These. Oh, you bought those. Yeah, yeah they're great. <laughs> D cup, right? <laughs> oh Absolutely. God. He applauds you. Is, I applaud that. I mean, it seems like you got a good doctor to do that. Yeah, Dr. Nicoli. He's hot. How long ago did you do it? 
About six years ago. Best movie of your life or you have problems? You know what? I'm a little uncomfortable with them now because I'm in the ministry. So what? it's hard to put on a preacher's collar <laughs> when you go poop. When you say ministry, what, what kind of ministry are you I'm in? the assistant pastor of a church in Los Angeles, Weller Street Missionary Baptist Church. And you feel, real? you feel the breasts make you too sexual it's, to yeah, minister? It, it's a little uncomfortable. Particularly, I put robes on. I put everything, but you can't hide. Yeah, it's hard. But you love them. I mean, you love what it does for your figure, right? Well, it's very difficult when you're trying to preach the message of uh, Jesus Christ and, you know, you've got all this going so on. So was the breast uh, <laughs> augmentation prior to you finding religion? Th- yes. Can a I say long something? Time ago. <laughs> I think your breasts help preach uh, because it attracts <laughs> men to the ministry. Uh, I think it's a very good thing. <laughs> I think more people should get uh, breast implants who are in the ministry and I might actually, right? I might need some counseling Even for sure. Guys, yeah. <laughs> you know, they said about you, Omarosa, that, you know, you would have your 15 minutes of fame and you would go away, but meanwhile, your 15 minutes have lasted much longer than the typical 15 minutes, have it's they not? A, it's been a decade. We started The Apprentice in the fall of 2003, so it's literally been 10 years. Is that how the public came to know you from The Apprentice? That's right. And yeah. how did you get on The Apprentice? What was your claim to fame for being on The Apprentice? Was it originally just because you were someone who entered the contest? Yeah, I was. I left the White House, and they had this competition to be a CEO for Trump's company, and so I sent a tape in. And, right. What were you doing yeah. at the White House? I forget. I was deputy the associate director of presidential personnel under Bill Clinton. Yeah, you're a big deal. I mean, you, you people don't know that about you. You have a law degree, don't you? No, I have a, a master's degree. Oh, you do? Where yeah, from? in law. From Howard University. So what's the difference between a master's degree in law and a lawyer? It's policy. I do telecom policy. I'm an expert in Section 254 of the Telecommunication Act, which nobody cares about. But so you you, <laughs> you are, but you never decided to become a, an actual lawyer. No, I did go to get a doctorate and I, always, I got all the way to the end and then I went on The Apprentice. So I had to either defend my dissertation or go and tape this show and I kind of... As sexy as you are, Bill Clinton never came on to you? <laughs> Seriously. No, he was very respectful. Really? Did you have alone time with him? I, I would, yeah, I would take trips. We, we did advanced trips, and so. And he never, I, mean, I don't know if you've was ever revealed ever this. Was it ever inappropriate? Yeah, was it ever? No, he was a consummate gentleman. Were you attracted to him? I think he was a great charismatic guy, but not in a disrespectful way. One, I think Hillary is awesome, and she's an incredible mentor, so. So the idea that Bill Clinton is a guy who just can't keep it in his pants was not something you experienced? No, I think that he was going through a really tough time with the impeachment, that sort of thing. And Did you I know think, Monica Lewinsky at the time? I saw her around the West Wing, but I didn't know her. Was it shocking to you personally, as someone who worked in the White House, that the oh, president, God, the man Albert. that you worked for, was it shocking to you when you learned about Monica Lewinsky? What was shocking is they kept telling us that the reports weren't true. Right. And so they would take us in the briefing room, and here we are, all these political appointees, and they're like, stay the course, it's not true, they're attacking him. And then you cut on the news that Sunday, and he's like, I had an inappropriate relationship with this girl. And we're like... Is that why you left the White House? Did you become disillusioned? No, I actually left to go work on Gore's campaign, and, you know, we lost that campaign. Do you think you really lost the campaign, or don't you think it was sort of a swindle? (laughs) I I mean, I always felt Gore won the general election, and somehow Florida screwed everything up, didn't you think? I absolutely agree. I I believe that we won that. We won the popular vote, and certainly there were some things that happened in Florida that caused us to not. Did you become disillusioned with politics because of that? Mm Mm-mm. No? I still believe in the power of the office. You do. Of the president of the United States. I would become very, very disheartened if I worked that hard on the Al Gore campaign. You should run for president. Stern for president. I'm running for vice president with Jesse Ventura in 2016, possibly. Are you? Yes, we're considering a run. What's your platform? Uh, I'm not sure. It's when he tells us all. I'm the vice president. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? You know what? I'm going along for the ride because that, that maniac <laughs> might actually win. He won the governor thing in Minnesota. I'm like, wow, vice president, I could handle that. Yeah, he's I mean, awesome. As long as he stays healthy and I don't have to run anything, I'm cool. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'll be the veep. But when you want to blow stuff up? Uh, oh, yeah. I want to. Don't you want to nuke some of these uh, countries oh, that are on. against us? I can't us? have either one of you in the office. Do you ever want to blow something I up? I have some aggression that issues. That's who why. would you blow up? I'll tell you who I want to after you tell me. If you were president of the United, if it was President Omarosa, who would you blow up? 
Anybody that hurt children, I would go after. So who's that? I mean, you see these stories of people who lock children in closets and hurt children. Yeah, and we can't just blow. Go and shoot up kids at Sandy Hook. You can't, you know. I'm talking do countries. That. Are there countries that you're angry with? No, no, no. Oh, countries. I'm talking about yeah. blowing up whole nations. Oh, you want to blow up whole nations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Jesse Ventura are going to do that. <laughs> see, okay, good office. luck with that. It's going to be great. <laughs> so are you satisfied with your life now that you're on The Apprentice again, or do you just see this as like a rehash old news? Are you enjoying? The Apprentice? I went on for charity. I mean, I right. won forty thousand dollars for the Sue Duncan Children's Center in the South Side of Chicago. So I think I did well. Duncan, it, I had no idea that you were engaged to the actor Michael Clark Duncan. Yes, yeah. he was. Who I think we, did he win the Academy Award? No, he was nominated, he was nominated yeah. for the best actor for a best. Green uh, Green Mile. Green, Green Mile. Mile. Yeah, great actor. Incredible. By the way, but, Howard. I was always supposed to give you a message from Michael <laughs> Clark Duncan, oh, really? and I saw him a few weeks before he died. And what was the and message? And he said, tell Howard I said hello. Oh, well, and how you... I never got to tell you that, and I felt horrible. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks for remembering that. I mean, you know, when he was alive, I would have wanted to know that. <laughs> when did you meet him? When did you I even... I met him in the Whole Foods about four years ago. Randomly? Was he a fan of yours from... Uh... Yeah, he walked up and he's like, oh, you're you're that tough girl, that mean girl from The Apprentice. And I was like, you know, screw you. And I walked away and I didn't give him my number. So <laughs> I had an attitude you? problem. How did he find you? He followed me around the store and we got into the checkout lane. He handed me his number and he's like, well, you know, let me make it up to you. And I was like, mm. And then he he actually made some calls and got my number. Was it love at first sight or were you, uh, did it take you a while to build no, an I don't attraction? Yeah, I never dated actors, so I wasn't really like, oh, it's an actor. You weren't impressed? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's Michael Clark Duncan. He's 6'5", 300 pounds. He's standing in front of you. He's got that amazing voice. So, yeah, yeah I was impressed, but I couldn't let him know that, Howard. How long did he date you uh, for before you became, like, romantically involved? Um, for a while. Did it take a long time to win a woman like you over? N- not, not really. I mean, Michael has the charm. First you know. night, you went to bed with him. Oh, that would be a sexy story, but no. <laughs> how long did you wait? How long did you hold out on a Michael Clark Duncan? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how long I yeah, held out. I'm talking out. romance. I love romance. Well, we are going to get married, Howard, so. Right. So how long yeah. did you wait before you consummated? <laughs> <clears throat> like I, Robin, I, where I are you? If you're a young girl oh, out there. I was there. just listening. What? <laughs> oh, Marissa, the reason I ask is that uh, <laughs> girls look up to you. In other words, why wait when you meet a great guy like that? Is there a, a strategy in terms of winning a man over? Well, you, that was before I... I became a pastor. Now that I'm a pastor, my right. counseling goes a lot differently. Now I tell women that they need to wait until they get married. So you become very boring. Absolutely. Right. Do you think without your <laughs> implants, Michael Clark Duncan would have uh, asked you to marry him? <laughs> was he wowed by them? Was he like, wow? Yeah. Was he, did that help? He was more of an ass man. He was so, an ass man? Oh. <laughs> so the boobs didn't help at all. He didn't spend time on your boobs? Oh my God, Howard, he's dead. When we you can't t- talk about a man why? when he's dead. He was a great romance. Your, was he the great love of your life? He was. He, he was. was. I wonder, you know, people have been asking me about dating again. I mean, is it weird that I don't want to date again? I mean, No, like you're I in want, love. Yeah, I don't want to. I would hope my wife would wait a few days before uh, she started days. dating if I died. <laughs> How long would you want her to wait? A, a lifetime. <laughs> really? You wouldn't want her to remarry? Hell no. I don't want any guy touching her. You would her. want her to be like sort of like Yoko Ono. Yeah, right. Like, like the, Yoko. Yeah, like Yoko. Yeah. That's trying to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put my glasses on display. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. going to be like Yoko. How long has it been since he's gone? Just six months. Oh, and of course you don't want to yeah. be with a guy. No. You were about to get married and start yeah. a whole adventure with this guy. Yeah, we have wedding gifts still coming to our house. It's kind of wow. weird. Re- you, who's doing that? The, who no, cruel, it was who's after, cruelly they, doing I don't that? Think that? I don't think people... Re- I think that they ordered things from our registry and they just were arriving. So even after he died, it was like stuff coming to the house. And I'm like, is this, is this like a cruel joke? Do you regret not having children with him? No, I I believe that God had an ultimate plan for us, and we were certainly going to start a family after we got married. Right. And so, you know, I think that everything happened as it was planned to. And and, and how did he pass away? He had a heart attack. Wasn't he a young guy? Yeah, Yeah. but he had sudden cardiac arrest. It's the same thing those 19-year-old basketball players, you know, they're playing, and they just drop dead. Their heart stopped. That's what happened to Michael. His heart just stopped suddenly. Were you with him when this happened? Yeah, I was with him. 
And, and and were you able to say goodbye to him? Well, what? no, I did CPR, and you know he he was able to get to the hospital, and he fought on life support for two months after. Wow. Yeah. You were with him when he had the heart attack, and you performed CPR. How That's do you know right. how to do that? I was a tennis instructor in college, and it was required. Good Lord, you've done it all, huh? You play tennis? Of course. Okay, I, well, I, you've done it all. I, I, <laughs> I, I defeated John McEnroe in two um, um, uh, tournaments recently. Robin, is he serious? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. When you're, I can't. All right. so you were a tennis instructor. In college, just to kind of make ends meet. Yeah. A very impressive woman, aren't you? I'm a humble woman. <laughs> is that why you're such a villain on these TV shows? It's fun to go on. I mean, I think after 10 years, people kind of know do you that think it's a you, persona. Do you fight with people on purpose, or are you really pissed off at them? No, I just kind of sit back, and I look at them, and I go, wow, that's that's just really dumb what you did. And then they get all worked up, like, she just said I'm dumb. And the truth of the matter is, when they're a project manager, you don't want them to do well, because then they'll become the apprentice. The, La- LaToya Jackson is the latest person you're having a problem with. I mean, in a big way. Well, she, no, she had a problem because she got fired because of me. And so then she got really mad and went on this ranch rant. And I mean, she just looks really stupid because she just didn't know how to play the game. I, I can't believe that somebody gets that worked up over winning the game. Yeah, that they did. That they literally get into these feuds and stuff. Now, you're threatening to sue her, right? Not threatening. I'm going to. She, she um, said really nasty things about Michael. What oh. did she say about Michael that really pissed you off? She said um, he had a heart attack. And I know that she caused it. He was on life support, and um, she went and pulled the plug. Now, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. As a a person with a legal background, how can you, like, you're as mean and as wrong as it is to say that about the man you loved and the man you were engaged to. Uh Uh-huh. I don't think it's actionable. It is only actionable if she repeats it. It's called a reckless disregard for the truth. So she said it back in October when she first taped the show. Right. She's repeated it subsequently on all of these talk shows that she's gone on. And so when you say it the first time, you are absolutely right. You can kind of disregard it. She said it on a reality show. You kind of let it go. Right. It's over the top or ridiculous. Over the top. It's, it's in the right. moment. I don't think anyone moment. believes that you caused your, your fiancé's heart attack. Right. But Howard, this is where the problem comes in. When you go six months later after you've had a chance to think about it, there's a cooling period. Right. And then you go on Bravo, watch what happens now, and you say it again. Right. And you say you believe it. And you perpetuate it as if, it, if it's the truth. And she's so done have you, that. Have you hired a lawyer? Absolutely. The best. Neville Johnson, Johnson & Johnson. Now, do you have to pay the lawyer? Is he taking yeah, this? You do. A lot. So this is going to cost you a lot of a money. A lot, yeah. You believe in this lawsuit so much. Absolutely. That, what does it cost to, to sue someone it's a, over this? It's going to probably cost me about twenty five dollars to $30,000 wow. to see it to the end, or maybe more. And what damages will you sue for? Well, one, you know, emotional distress. I mean, right. do you really want people to think that you harmed the person that you love? I if, can tell you, I don't think anyone really thinks that of you. But she keeps repeating it. So, so if she stopped and said, you know what, I was on a reality show, but it becomes very, very dangerous. One, his mother is still alive. Right. And she's hearing this. His nephew called me and was like, auntie, at school they're saying, you know, these things happen to Michael. If, if it was just me. She's trying to bully you. Say it again? She's trying to bully you into, into like some sort of weird place. I think she's trying to promote a show. She's got a, some little show coming on. I think she's trying to use it. Have you said to her, look, knock it off or I'm going to sue you? Yes, that's the first thing you have to do in California. You have to send a retraction letter. Right. And, b- and by we the got way, a letter the re- from them. By the way, I don't believe this, but let's for the record, did you pull the plug on Michael Clark God, Duncan? No. no, you did oh, not. I okay. love that man. Right. That's what I figured. Right. And right. how could you? You wouldn't have been the person to make that decision. No, no, right. that's not... Her, 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 uh, she's saying, hey, you pulled the plug prematurely on him. You wanted to get rid of him. That's what she's implying, That's in other words. That's what she's words. trying to imply. Wow. She's sick and demented. You know, she did all these things to her family. She sold tabloid stories on her family. She wrote a book. She had press conferences when Michael was, Michael Jackson was being attacked publicly. Instead of standing by her brother, she utilized it and exploited him. And I think she's trying to exploit Michael Clark Duncan's death in, in some weird way. I just don't know, but. So you said to her. Hey, LaToya, this is getting real now. This isn't about uh, The Apprentice anymore. Right. Retract your statement and I won't sue you. That's right. And she refuses to retract it. She refuses to retract it. They asked her on the Today Show, did you really believe it? And she says, well, yeah, I I mean, I didn't mean that mean. But, you know, it's just really, it's strange. And I, I really would just love for her to just say, 
you know, I apologize. I didn't mean it. And for it to end, because I don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. So what do you want her to do? Say it right now. She just needs to retract. She needs to say that, yeah, that what she said was not true. If she does that, it goes away. Today today. you're filing the lawsuit. Right. The lawsuit is going You gave her like 15 days. and You gave her the time to retract it. And now, you know, we'll both be spending money on lawyers. Right. I'm surprised she wouldn't retract that because it just sounds like. We got a letter from her attorney. And what did that say? It said that it was the producer's fault. The producers what? made her do it. It really? was really strange. It was a long letter, too. So rather than be done with it and just apologize. She blamed the apprentice producers. She blamed the show. She blamed stress. She blamed the situation. And then at the end, her attorney says, on behalf of my client, this is we, we don't believe this, but we're going to just say that Omarosa should know a little something about public feuds. I mean, it was just so convoluted. And a retraction comes from LaToya Jackson that simply says... I don't believe what I said. I retract my statement. If she says that, it goes away. So The Apprentice gets real in a sense. I mean, people really get angry with one another. I don't know why. It's a game. It's a game show. And only one person wins. And then we go back to our real lives. Are you off the show at this point? No, you're still still in the game. I'm still in the game. So you know what happens, but we don't, right? (laughs) I mean, in other words, this has all been played out already. That's right. Right. And and so uh, Brett Michaels. You kind of masterminded him getting off the show. You told everyone, I said hey, that Brett's he's a great player. Let's get rid player. of him. I said he's an amazing player. He's smart. And he's already won the game. Right. So why would we... And they believed you. Right. And they threw him off. <laughs> and now did. he started crying. Is that correct? Oh, I heard those stories. Brett, don't cry. He's did he really cry? And he's angry with you. And he's mad at me. And it doesn't bother you. No, I don't care. I, I mean, the check for the show cleared like six months. I could care less. You're playing a game and you convinced your... It's a your, game show. And why is it so important to Brett Michaels to win? Is, it, is he clinging to this show for, for desperation or something? I, I don't know. It really isn't. At the end of the day, it's not the most important thing going on. It's in the baffling, world. isn't it? I mean, I like The Apprentice, but it's just really not the most important thing happening in my life right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it seems to me that there are bigger things than... I mean... I look at your life, it's filled with a lot of tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. It really is. Uh, your father died, was he murdered? My your father fa- was murdered. Your father was murdered? Yeah, when I was seven. How did that happen? He was killed. By, by who? Uh, uh, was yeah, it over a, a monster, beef? really. I, I mean, I, I was seven years old, and you know, your daddy's a little girl, and then you're... You know, your father was killed. And then fast forward, my brother died. Two, was I, killed two years ago. Your brother was, was killed two years ago. Right. And, and your fiancé died of a heart attack. Right. So there's more important things in my life going on than The Apprentice and you Brett Michaels. You can separate what's real from what's Yeah, not it's real. really not that serious, The Apprentice. Yeah, I mean, the reason they like you on that show is because you don't mind being hated or, or saying what's on your mind. Right, because I, I speak very candidly, and they think they're at Club Med, and they're just kind of kumbayaing, and they're having a good time. But... It's business, and I think a lot of them aren't equipped to compete on that level. They brought Piers Morgan in, yeah. ostensibly to be some sort of, um, uh, I, I don't know, what, what, why did they bring him into The Apprentice? He was supposed to be a judge, but he said on the Today Shows, uh, in an article, that he came back simply to fight with me, which is just is so tragic. I mean, it's Did you fight petty. with him on it? I mean, I put, I'm not going to let him say crazy things to me. I mean, he is a jerk, and you know he's a jerk because, I mean, nobody's really watching his show, Howard. I think he has like three viewers. When he... <laughs> Have you ever been on his new CNN talk show? No, I have no interest. I did Larry King, who's, you know, I consider one of the greatest. I don't want to go backwards. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so when you say Piers Morgan, it was brought on to provoke you. No, he admitted. He said it. I came on specifically to fight with Omarosa. What would he do to get under your skin? He would just insult me. He would tell Donald that I was the worst, even though I was the best on the task. He just undermined everything that I did. And did you confront him? I did. And did you say to him, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you being a jerk? you know, your life has to be pretty pathetic if this is the highlight of your day. Do you think in a weird way he might be attracted to you? I think so. You do? Yeah, absolutely. He probably wants you. It's kind of gross. <laughs> oh, you would never ever oh make God. you would never make love to him. No, I mean I, my fiance was just a, the finest man you'd ever want to meet. And I a fabulous never. lover. <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan was Were unbelievably you big. Clark Duncan? I, I was know. back in the uh, 60s. <laughs> what? No, seriously, Michael Clark Duncan had to be 
Oh my God. Huge and thick. Oh my. <laughs> Robin, please. Help there was a report me. that he was over 10 inches long. Oh what? My God. There was yes. a report. Yes, yes, there was. Where How was that report? I met it. Um, Where was the report? Piers Morgan show. <laughs> I have to find this guy's name. I was on the plane with this um, CEO guy, and he's your biggest fan, and I. I'm going to say his name. No, let me ask you, you something. Mind? Let's talk like adults for a second. Oh, here, it is, here it is. Can I just say this guy's name? His name is Brian Hale. He was a nice guy, and he Thank was your you, biggest fan. Omarosa. Hi, Brian. Omarosa. Okay. Uh, let's talk like adults. Okay. When you saw Michael Clark Duncan nude for the first time, <laughs> and you've, you know, you've been around the block. You're, you're an attractive woman. Men are attractive to you. Com- I find very you very attractive. I understand, but it's, it's for, important for the record. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. What, <laughs> what record? What, was he the largest man you'd ever been with? And I'm not talking about his height. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Was he? And was it frightening? Uh, Michael was an incredible human being. An incredible lover? An incredible lover. The best lover you ever being, had. Incredible fiance. He was the love of my life. Right. He topped every list in my life. Everything I'd ever experienced. Do you have the name of another CEO you met on the plane to avoid talking about Michael Clark Duncan's <laughs> penis? No, no, no. Yeah, that's real. Right. No, this Brian Hill, he said, he was just like, you're going on Stern. That's so cool. And I was like, yeah. And, you know. Were you attracted to Brian Hill? No, Brian, Brian was married. He was he's a married just a really man. nice guy. I All just right. wanted to shout him out because he was really, he, he's one of your fans. Do you think when you do, do you think you will eventually go back to dating? I don't think so. Are you serious? I, I'm really... For the rest of your life, you're a very young woman. I, I know it sounds really... I, I just can't visualize... Maybe in the future, I just can't visualize it right now. You were too in love. Yeah. Well, he ruined you. <laughs> I just... I don't have any... He must have crushed it. Uh. <laughs> wow. How would I miss him? Right now hey, I, I bet you do. I do. Died, yeah. he would date. Who How would date? How would you date you. if your wife... I'm in love. But if she dies... If she died, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, stop it. I you don't think I would. I certainly one. wouldn't date. I, I'm being honest now. I certainly okay. wouldn't date six months. I would I would need a period of time. How long, Howard? I don't know. I, I've never been through the loss of, a, of someone I love that much. But yeah. you know you're but, not going to live the rest of your life alone. Oh, no. I need action. <laughs> oh, I need it. I need, do you know the other day I made love to my wife in the morning and I masturbated at night? Oh, that's that's too much information. I have a tremendous <laughs> sex drive. Poor Omarosa. How would your you whole what. staff is all dressed all fancy now? What did you do? Uh, they knew you were coming in. No, and they, they wanted to. They wanted to clean to up their act. They're, they're in pr- shirts and ties. Their hair they is heard, all slick. They back. heard that you were dating. They got the information wrong. <laughs> That's not true. No man has caught your eye, huh? No. Good for you. I, I, you know what? That shows me the level of commitment. I, I'm in love. I, I, I know it's strange, but I am in love with Michael. I mean, he was just an incredible human being. Are you in touch with his family still? I am. You I are. Am. Yeah. Do you live in his house still? Someone said you our actually. Our house. You our li- home. You're home, our home together. Yeah. Too many memories. Maybe sell it. I'm. I. It's. It's big. It's ten thousand square feet. It's just me and the dog. So that's too much. Room. That's too yeah. much room. Did he have a brother? No, only that a sister. That would yeah. be some story if you married his brother. Oh, that my would be goodness. so creepy, Howard. <laughs> Not necessarily. It's no, happened. Really. My aunt did that. Your she aunt married, married your uncle's brother? That's right. She was very much in love with my uncle, and then he was there to console her, and they, they formed into a loving relationship. That's not a little strange? No, I thought if you knew them, you wouldn't think it was strange. Okay. You know? In fact, oh. it's in the Bible. You should know that. That's what you're supposed to do. That you're supposed to bang your, your, your brother's uh, <laughs> wife. Yeah, thank God. Michael doesn't have a brother. Thank God we didn't go through that. <laughs> I think in the Bible it's required, actually, that you no, do that. it's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't there one story where, you know, you're supposed to take your brother's ta- widow? Yes. No, you're supposed to take care of the widows. I mean, well, it's I'll take care of you. Christ's word, <laughs> in Christ's words. If I was <laughs> Michael Clark Duncan's brother, I'd be taking care of you right now. <laughs> Trust me. You wouldn't know what hit you. <laughs> You'd be over it real quick. <laughs> Howard, I chose this outfit just for you. It's a great to outfit. To make sure everything was covered. You're looking good. What are you doing for working out? I spent been. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's working. Thanks. What about, uh, so, so you mean they never caught your dad's killer? Uh, yeah, he, he spent some time, but he got out. I mean. How does he get out after he killed? What was, was the, like what 13 was. 13 or 14 years. Why did he kill your father? Did they ever ask him? Did yeah. you ever research it? I never did. I was heartbroken. I was daddy's little girl and my father was killed. So. Do, you, do we know, was he, was he involved in anything illegal? Was, did I he know the, the guy? the guy was mentally ill. And how, why did he pick your father out of all the people? I don't know, but he had a long track record of crime. You really don't know? No, I don't. I don't believe you. I don't. I don't mm-hmm. believe that. I think I it would was look just into a random it. act. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh my God. And what happened to your brother? My brother um, was killed when he was in bed. An uh, intruder came in and... 
shot him. Why did the, the intruder shoot your poor brother? Howard, this is such a heavy show today. Yes. I thought we would come and, you know. You, you, either talk about Michael's penis ah. or talk about how your brother died. <laughs> Were you close uh, to your brother? You're going to have me in therapy. I was very close <laughs> to my brother, but he was involved with a, a woman, and she was involved with this guy who killed him. So uh, she had a lover's triangle uh, going. The guy uh, came in? Yeah. Into the house? That's right. Looking for his girlfriend? No, he came in looking for the guy who took the, the woman girlfriend. from him. He yeah. was jealous. Yeah. Is the guy in jail now? Yeah, he is. For we life? We had to go through a trial and everything. Well, I take that back. He pleaded. He got life, but we didn't have to go through that long, drawn-out process. Do you wish that they had executed this guy? No, 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 no. You don't believe in the death penalty? No, I don't. Mm-mm. Are you angry about it? I'm, I am in such a place of forgiveness, Howard. Really? How I do you am. forgive the person who kills your brother? Because if you don't, then it controls you. No, but teach the me how to do that. The anger and the hate will con- consume you. What do you mean by forgiveness? You have to let it go. Truly, you have to how let it go. How do you do that? What, you have to realize that this person isn't going to, you know, hating him is not going to bring my brother back. That's the first thing. Right. If it would change things... Then maybe, but it's not going to change anything. So you've got to live your life. And what do you mean you forgive him? You're like, it's okay that you did. No, not in that way. But, 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 you know, the first thing that you learn in the ministry is forgiveness. In fact, Christ requires you to have forgiveness in your heart. I couldn't have forgiveness. That's why I'm not joining the ministry anytime soon. I would just be pissed. (laughs) I would not. That once I was talking to a minister and I told them, you know, a little bit about my backstory and I said, you know, I'm having trouble forgiving these people. And then I told them why. And the minister said to me, maybe you shouldn't forgive. Them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, she's got <laughs> stories. Wow, Robin. <laughs> Has Latoya Jackson accused you of any other deaths, the death of your brother or your father? Has she come out and, and tried to do it that? It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, she's insane. I can't believe it. It wouldn't surprise me. But this is the same woman that posed on the cover of Playboy making out with a snake. So, right. you know, it's Look hard to feuds. expect. It's hard to expect anything from her. It's hard to forgive her, isn't it? Well, I, I, I don't have a problem forgiving, but she will hear from my attorney. She's, right. You know. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> you've done it again. What have I done? I don't know, but you've done it again. <laughs> um, you have to watch Omarosa. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, Omarosa, you never use your last name. Mm-mm. I was trying to pronounce it even. Why don't you use your last name? Are you going for that whole share thing? Well, I or? think Omarosa is a mouthful. It is. Yeah. So my full name is Omarosa Oni Manigault. Manigault. Oh yeah, Manigault. Manigault. Yes. But you don't use that. No. What's the future for Omarosa? What do you want to do? I know you <laughs> want to be focus, a minister. I want to focus on my ministry full time. Yeah, but that don't pay the bills, baby. You know that. <laughs> I'm get, not doing it for money. <laughs> did you get all of uh, Michael Clark Duncan's money after he passed away? That is the tackiest question I have ever. I have heard. to know. You know. You know this is important. We were this getting married. Who else would he leave it to, Howard? We so were are you set married. for life? Because that guy was doing pretty well. We were getting married. Are you set for life? I would rather have Michael than his money. I know that. I say, are you set? For, are you comfortable financially? Michael took care of me. I was going to be his wife. I mean, why wouldn't Why are you he? getting defensive because over that? Because it's so of course he should awkward take it. talking about Michael's If you estate. told me that he hadn't taken care of you, then I'd be pissed. No, he... You he took, should have been taken care of. He took care of. care of me. Yeah. So you don't have to work anymore. So why do these reality shows and all this nonsense and fight with LaToya Jackson? I did it for the charity. It's I for see. the Sue Duncan Children's Center in Chicago. These kids are worth it, Howard. Right. Howard, will you send a Kindle to my kids? A what? We're building a Kindle library. A Kindle? Robin, doesn't he know what a Kindle these is? These kids it's need like Kindle? Kindle? Yeah, he's very, very It's sheltered. like a iPad. I know what a Kindle is. It's for re- will you send one to my the kids? The charity is to send Kindles to the kids? No, that's one of the movements. I'll give you a couple build- of bucks. You want to give them two Kindles? How much is a Kindle? A Kindle is $150. Yeah, here you go, baby. Right oh, my God. Yeah, I'll give you 150. Howard, the kids want the Kindle from you. Yeah, I'm giving it to you. What, what do you mean? Here's How does 150. he send it to them? He, I'm going to give him the information. You just send oh, it yeah, to Here you go. Here's 150. Give it to me because I actually Howard, have they, a Kindle sitting right here that I don't use, and it's never been opened. I might even give you an Robin, iPad. Robin, will you send it to the Absolutely kids at Sue Duncan? I will. Omarosa, Thank here. You. Here's 150. Here's it for the kids. What are you kidding? Now I'm, she's got to go order the Kindle. No, I want oh, Howard I have to, to get send the Kindle? it. From, yeah. Howard, will you send a Kindle? It's the Michael Clark Duncan Kindle Library. All right. See, it's for a good cause. Well, Stop trying to take the easy way out. Howard. Now the kids. I gave her 150. She turned me down. I did not turn you down. I would never turn down money for the charity. All right, all right. Well, so, so, so in other words, you're set for life. 
You don't have to work anymore. Am I correct? I'm focusing on raising money for the charity and on my ministry. Yeah, you're a lady of leisure. <laughs> that is not leisure. It's tough work being a fundraiser. What do you do with your money? What do you do? Seriously. I'm a big investor. What do you I believe invest in, in property because God isn't making any more land. I like to buy where land. Where are you buying, buying land so people All know. over the place. Like where? where's the last place you bought land? In Ohio, where I grew up. In Ohio? I know. It sounds strange, but That's I've always wanted to have investment. a homestead, you know, just a place where my family can kind of go. So. All right. All right. You seem to know what you do. That outfit is very tight. You can't be wearing underwear with it. However, of course I'm wearing underwear. Are you? I knew I was coming You're wearing to the panties? Show. You have to. With that? Yes. Wow, I don't see any panty line. When you stand <laughs> up, I'm going to look at your ass and see if I can see a panty line. So. Howard, are you on Twitter? Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Will you tweet out for me? I don't even, I don't even you use don't, you, it. You don't? I mean, I, I, I barely use it. It's annoying. There's a lot of hate on there. Well, Do people say mean show, things to you? Uh, are you kidding? My fans hate me. <laughs> My fans hate me. <laughs> hey, no, some do. Some can I mean. borrow that line? My some fans are mean. hate me. Some are mean. Uh, watch Omarosa on All Star Celebrity Apprentice on mm-hmm. NBC. And uh, she is not dating. Not we right that. now, no. no. No dating. She'll be back in the saddle within six months. Six months? Howard? Another yeah. six months you give her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She'll meet some fabulous guy. Well, then if it's a fabulous guy, Michael probably sent him. Oh, please. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Poor Michael. <laughs> Poor Michael. Good actor. Yeah, great actor. I actually bring the cameras into my house on the show I did on Oprah called uh, Where Are They Now? You can you see Oprah? our home. I did uh, Where Are They Now on the Oprah Winfrey Network. It comes on next Tuesday. Anyway, I bring the cameras into my home so you can see our house, you can see my church, you can see what my life is like. How's Oprah treating you? Um, Oprah has always been nice to me. Is she nice to you? Oh, she loves me. Uh, yeah, we, we sort of stay our, keep our distance. <laughs> no, Don't say like... mean things about Lady O. I love uh, her. Yeah, I say some mean stuff about her. That's you know, it's right. pronounced Ope. No, the same as you. Omarosa, <laughs> Oprah. Oprah. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard O, same as you. You still this fighting is... with Wendy Williams? I love Wendy now. What oh, happened? Good. We, you, had, how... we had a uh, come to Jesus me- meeting. Why were you fighting with her? It's, I think it was a misunderstanding. I think she's very talented, and I'm glad her show is doing well. Wow, look at you. See, That's I've grown good. since I've last yeah. been good here. Do you see the maturity? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean... Don't get too nice. It'll be boring. Oh, really? Stop. Absolutely. Everyone She'll always left. play the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Omarosa, I wish you the best. Thank you. I'm going to tweet you right now. Yeah, uh, tweet me. Okay. And, and uh, will you tweet me back at Omarosa on Twitter? Sure. Why not? Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll See, get a little something going with you. you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. If I was single, I'd uh, give it to you. I'd get you over that Michael Clark oh, Duncan geez. thing. Oh, you would help me through my grief. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, two seconds, sure. He's, he's the best at You'd love it. Right, Robin? <laughs> he's the best at getting over grief. Absolutely. I'm a grief counselor. You are. Oh, yeah. What's the first step? The first step is having sex with me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, baby. All right. Listen, Omarosa, I wish you the best. Howard, thanks for having me on. Uh, good I to always have, have you. fun. And we'll watch you on The Apprentice. You are? I mean, I will. I have to watch you on Please The Apprentice. Please do. And uh, we'll be back right after these words. Hi. Omarosa. Yes. The interview weaved in and out of really serious <laughs> and heavy topics, but then really hilarious and laughable topics. How, how do you navigate that when Howard's coming at you from so many different angles and, and using so many different emotions? There's no way to prepare for a Howard Stern interview. You just kind of have to ride the wave. It's like surfing. You know, you just kind of stay on the board. That's all. And how do you keep from, like, it seems like when Howard goes to these different places, you laugh and you smile at him because you seem to be coming from a place where you like him. So I really do genuinely like Howard Stern. I think he's one of the best interviews, one of the best interviewers as well. And um, it's a lot of fun. And I seldom get to have a lot of fun when I'm going to do interviews. He covers the gamut of topics. I mean, he does his research. He knows what he's talking about. And... Um, I love it. So when he goes, you know, towards the heavier side and then brings up a, you know, makes a humorous angle of a really heavy topic, you allow him to do that because you respect him. He's the only one that can do that. I mean, (laughs) really, Howard's the only one that can talk about your sex life and you don't feel offended about it. Because you have so much respect for him as an I really do. No, I, I love Howard Stern. I think that he's smart. I think that he is probably one of the best. So. Well, thank you very much for your interview and for your time today. Thank you.
Bobby Moynihan is here. Who is Bobby Moynihan? Now, Saturday Night that Live. That name sounds familiar. So he is on Saturday Night Live. One of the uh, one of the standout cast members of Saturday Night Live. Nice guy. Came in here this morning to say hello. Tell us about SNL. What's going on in his life? You understand? Everybody uh, up to speed on this? All right, good. All right, I'll take a break and then we'll talk to Bobby right after these words. Hey, I'm Bobby Moynihan from Saturday Night Live. Uh, here at the Howard Stern Show. I kind of can't believe it. I used to watch it as a kid, and I'm super excited to be here. Um, I want one of these for my office. Your very own personal Hank doll. Or uh, Hank yeah. wall, wall art. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that, that's pretty amazing. I might steal that. <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy to be here. It's amazing. So being such a big fan, what are you expecting going into today's interview? I feel like maybe a fist fight. <laughs> right? No, uh, I just can't wait. I'm excited to talk to him. He's been uh, uh, such a part of my life for a long time, so it's... Uh, it's kind of fascinating to be here. I'm super excited about it. Well, we're excited that you're here, too, so we'll see you in the studio. Yeah, man. Take care. Uh, Bobby Moynihan has a new movie out. He's, a, he's also on Saturday Night Live. It was his ambition in life to be on Saturday Night Live. Like, Is that right? <clears throat> dreams do come true. There you are. Hey, Bobby. Good to see you. You know, it's funny. You don't look like Artie in real life, and yet on TV, you do look like Artie. You yeah. Know? It's, it's, uh, it's this right here. It's weird. Like, I was like... Like, I first noticed you because you look like Artie. Yeah, I remember. And I was just like, wow, that guy's Artie. I get it a lot. Yeah, and so I immediately liked you because I like Artie, you know. <laughs> so I was like, hey, he seems pretty good, you know. Yeah, the Monday after my very first show, I remember listening, tuning in. Yeah. And I think the show started, and you were like, who is this guy? With, with and you sounded so mad, and I was terrified. Oh, was what? Like, you mean I was mad that you looked like Artie? Well, I was, was angry with you. It's like they, did they just hired a guy that looks like Artie. I was and I've been I've been watching you since I was a kid, so I was like Where would you I, grow up? Uh Westchester. I grew up in Eastchester. Oh, Eastchester. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and that was your goal like in life. Like you like you from the earliest time you can remember you wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. Isn't that amazing like like It's still I can't believe that this is happening. Like be, it's fascinating. Because what's so weird about it? Is that that you know you know how, like when I was in college radio, every guy at the college radio station was like, "Hey, I want to be on NBC Radio or I want to be on this and that," and they all had these grand plans, and most of them don't. None of them actually ended up in radio for the most part. A couple did. Yeah. And, and so to walk around all your whole life, and hey, I'm going to be on Saturday Night Live. I'm going to be on Saturday Night Live. It, it's a, it's, it's a almost to insane. One. It's insane. Yeah, it's like saying I want to go to space. Right. And was your family annoyed with you that the that you kept saying I want to be on I mean, I imagine it was your obsession, right? Yeah, I used to I used to like make videos of myself walking out of the bathroom and going like Bobby Moynihan like I, doing <laughs> like, the Don Pardo voice. Yeah, like I used to film fake sketches like on like a huge video camera like when I was a kid like What was always. it like the first time you heard Don Pardo actually say your name? I burst into tears. Did you? Yeah. Because it was your life. Because it was crazy. <laughs> well, yeah. Be, I, I'm I'm very fanboyish, and I'm very like I'm I'm very into that whole the history of it and and all that stuff. And right. ev every day you walk in there and you hear that music playing on a Saturday, it's like I I can't I can't believe you it. You read all the Saturday Night Live books and all I've, the the exposés and there's all that stuff. Nothing I haven't read before I got the show. I Me mean, too. I'm actually fascinated by Saturday Night Live. Not that I ever wanted to be on it, or but I you remember been amazing. I, well, well hosting, I don't know about you that. Host. I, I was offered to host. But I was such a fucking flaming <laughs> asshole in Lauren's office. I went in there with such arrogance, and I told him that uh, I did not want anybody writing any sketches, that my guys and I would write the sketches, and we would take over the... And Lauren is looking at me like I'm out of my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're Hi, crazy. Yeah. Hi there. So, so, you know, it never happened. But, you know, to me, to, 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 I think one of the reasons I wouldn't want to work on Saturday Night Live it's because it's like Lord of the Flies, that no matter how good you are, or no matter how popular you are, you've got a cast of about, what, 20 people? Uh, I think right now it's 13, including Seth, yeah. Okay, so it's 13 people, all vying for attention, all vying for their scripts to be read and, yeah. and worked on, and... Lorne, in his wisdom, and I think he's a brilliant guy. He's a genius. He kind of like, at the end of every season, you find out you're going to be fired. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like, no matter how good, like, like guys who are popular get fired. Yeah, I, 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 the, getting on the show is one thing, and then staying on is, a, is, a, is another thing, I feel like. Like, right. my, my first couple years, it was, 
all encompassing. Like it was just stay on this show and work so hard. Like how many years I you had on a now? Year, this is my fifth season. Fifth season. Yeah. And did you worry every season that you wouldn't be asked back? Now I'm okay. Well, right. now now that just waking up on a Monday with just a pit in your stomach is gone. But the first couple of years, it was it was it was pretty rough. I'm a pretty easygoing. I'm pretty happy in my normal life. So so I would just wake up every day like terrified, but not terrified like I think I'm doing a bad job. I'm going to get fired. Like terrified like I can't believe that I get to do this. So I want to. You you just want to do stuff every week. Do you think that because the job means everything to you, the fact that, like, even, you know, the fact that you had an emotional breakdown when Don Pardo announced <laughs> your name, do you think that hurts you in a way because you're, are you over anxious when you get into a writing meeting? Yeah, I think, I think it definitely, there are people who get there and, like, the second they're there, they get it and they do really well. Yeah. And then there's some people who it takes them a little bit longer. I think it definitely took me a little bit longer to get comfortable, but. It's all in your own head. You make yourself insane. What was the first character that broke through for you? Was it the drunk uncle? Th- well, that, I like that. Thank uh, you like so much. Like when you're drunk uncle. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, that's like uh, everyone has a drunk uncle. Yeah. This complete fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't even know they're the drunk uncle. Uh, you wrote that? Yeah. Uh, me and uh, uh, my buddy Colin Jost, one of the writers there. Right. But what uh, was the yeah. first thing that, like, when you first joined the <laughs> cast, do you first feel like, uh-oh, I'm not fitting in, they're going to get rid of me right away? Well, I think I fit a type that they didn't have in a while, so that was nice. And and when I came in, you know, Amy Poehler and Daryl Hammond and all them were still there. Uh, my first episode was the first time Tina did Sarah Palin, so I, I came in kind of like when it felt like it was it, everything was really going on again. Yeah. And I I was the guy who like would just get the one line in the sketch, and I was so happy because people who had been there for five years didn't necessarily want to. You know, drive up to Connecticut to go shoot a fake commercial, and I'd be like, "I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do yeah. anything you guys fucking want." <laughs> yeah, pretty do much. You, do, so, when you have a life's ambition to be on Saturday Night Live, let's figure out how you plan that and how your trajectory went. Because why not? We all want to be on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Why not? So we'll let's just follow what you did. It seems easy. <laughs> so, how old are you when you realize the dream? I mean, I, I was I was pretty young. I used to go back and watch. This was before the internet. I would go to like the library or like the museum of television and radio wow. and go watch like old episodes like going back to like the chevy chase days and all that oh, stuff. oh yeah i can wow. s- yeah i'm a big nerd about and, it <laughs> and, and, and so so what do you do to become a comedian who specializes in sketches and stuff do you go become I, a stand-up guy i i don't i didn't do, i only did stand-up for like a little while and like literal a little while meaning like three months like i i i you graduate high school. Do you go to college? Yeah, I went to University of Connecticut. What do we study at University of Connecticut to become a Saturday Night Live guy? I was an acting major. I, I went right. there. Uh, that was just... And I auditioned for their acting program because I had done theater and stuff in high school. So I was like... But I'm, that's smart. Yeah, and I was like, I'm poor. I'm not going to get into college. So let me go try and do this acting thing. My and, father always thought I was an idiot because I wanted to be in radio and I took communications. He goes, no, you should take acting lessons <laughs> if you want to be on the air. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, and I did like a lot of Shakespeare and a lot of that, that kind of stuff like, and, and musicals. But always with your eye on Saturday Night well, Live. Always with that thing of like, if I had my dream job, I would lo- like. When, said, when someone said, "What do you want to do?" I'd say, "I want to be on Saturday Night Live," but that's never going to happen. So I'll probably just try and do theater. See, that's like Jimmy Kimmel in a way. He always, I think, he he worshipped Letterman and yeah. like wanted to be Letterman. And now he's got his own Letterman type yeah, show. I was a nerdy kid. I had like Lauren's picture and Jim Henson's picture on my wall. Wow, I was really young. Did your parents think you were gay? <laughs> probably at some <laughs> point. I mean, you're probably the only kid. My goodness, isn't that amazing? You see, I would love a kid like you because I'd be like, wow, my son has Lauren Michaels picture on his wall. <laughs> I would think that was the most original thing ever. Going back now, it's funny. There's a pic. It's a picture of him standing next to one of the cranes they use, and like, one of the camera cranes. <laughs> yeah. and uh-huh. it's got Saturday Night Live written on the back, and that crane is still there. And I look at it. And Did just, you write him for that picture? I mean, where do you go to get? I was going to say, where yeah. do you get a Lorne picture? I pulled it out of some magazine, I think, or something. <laughs> That's the greatest. If I walked into my son's room and saw a Lorne Michaels picture, I'd go, "Wow, what a fucking kid!" <laughs> my this my, my ten-year-old son has this middle-aged man picture above his bed. <laughs> See, there's a sketch. Yeah, there a you little go. kid fantasizing, and his wall. His parents are concerned because he has Lauren Michaels on there. I mean, that is really odd. 
Did your parents say anything to you about like why Lauren? Oh, they understood the whole fascination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, What'd your like, father do for a living? Do, I mean, because it's hard for some dads to wrap their heads around a kid who wants to have a showbiz career. Yeah, I think it was. He he owned a liquor store uh, in right. Shell and um, he was probably like, oh, okay, why, why not? Uh, let's get drunk and look at Lauren Michaels' pictures. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Right. Uh, was I played, he upset with you that you I were? I played still- hockey throughout high school and college, so I think he thought I might play hockey or do something with that, and then yeah. I was like. I'm going to UConn to be an acting major, and he was like, "You're going to freeze your ass off." And I'm yeah. like, "Not." That, not he the, thought I meant like the UConn, like Y U K O N. You're going to the UConn. It's like no University of Connecticut. <laughs> I'm uh, going to be a Mountie, Dad. I'm going to the UConn. I, when I told him, I, got, I was like, "Dad, I got Saturday Night Live." Yeah. And he went, uh, "Is that the one with uh, Mick Jagger?" <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, probably at one point. He goes, you got health insurance? I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, congratulations. He didn't care. Well, I mean, like, he now he now he's super happy. Now but at he the time, it, he was yeah. like, yeah, great, Wh- whatever. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> hey, wow. So, so, so in the preparation, in this life plan, you can't go to a guidance counselor and say, I want to be on Saturday Night Live, <laughs> so what do I do? Well, they, I, I would go into guidance counselors. They'd be like, what do you want to do? And I'd be like, I don't know. <laughs> and they would just look at me like, yeah, like I was an idiot. And, uh, right. But, I, yeah, I went to UConn. I did a bunch of theater, and then I moved back to New York. And when I got back to New York, I found uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. Oh, now what is is it Uptight Citizens Brigade? Upright. Upright. Uh, like stand up. Yeah, right. But yeah. is that like a... Um, um, the Uptight Citizens Brigade is not funny. Most. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> the Upright Citizens Brigade is like a, a Second City type thing. Yeah, it's. Uh, it was started by Amy Poehler. Um, How old were you Walsh. at that point when you joined that? Like 20? Uh, Matt Batzer and Ian Roberts. Um, I was... It was uh, 2001 when I got out of... I'm 36 now. I don't right. do math very well. I, it was 2001. So like, you were I like a kid. There. You leave yeah. college and you mean... You finish college, and then you go and look for this upright citizen. Yeah, I came home. I was walking down the street. I saw the the sign, and I, I watched their show on Comedy Central, and right. I loved it. So I went in. I saw a show, like an improv show there, and uh, the next day I signed up for classes, and I was I'm, I still do shows there. And how are you now. making money at that point? I was bartending at a Pizzeria Uno. Oh, wow. And so <laughs> you then joined this, and you auditioned for the Upright Citizens Brigade. Well, yeah, it was like you t- I took classes, like improv classes, and just started, like, learning how to do improv with all these other people, and I met, like, you know, all my closest friends in the world. Were now, you a funny kid growing up? Yeah, I was a I was a little maniac. You were? Yeah. <laughs> you were known as the funny guy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did a lot of, like... Stuff and like did a lot of local theater in the community, like you know, right. like yeah. I used to draw a lot. I was that weird kid who drew pictures well, and made everybody laugh. Yeah, and so I was a you, fat little weirdo. <laughs> you get into upright citizens because it's a pretty good story. If you if you get into upright citizens brigade, brigade right away, you meet Amy Poehler. Who else uh, is well, in there? Well, when I when I first started, it was Amy Poehler, Matt Walsh, um, uh, Ian Roberts, and Matt Besser started it. Um, but when I when I first got there. You know, it was a bunch of people like Paul Shear, Rob Hubel, uh, Rob Cordry, like a lot of these guys. Like, w- like now it's a joke. Like, if I want to see my friends, I turn on NBC on Thursday nights. Right, they're all there. Every single person that I worked with is now working in. Do you think network executives do that? Do they go to places like Upright Citizens Brigade and find these guys? Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, I, when I when I first started, it was still like I came in. I feel like almost in like the second generation. Like they had set up the place and then. I was the f- last, they had called Herald Teams, it was improv teams, and I was the last one at the old theater before they moved uh, to 26. But the goal eight. in your mind was, fuck Upright Citizens Brigade, this is to prepare for Saturday Night <laughs> Live, right? This is well, to get you going. For it was, some- yeah, it was more like meeting, all of a sudden you're in a room with 30 people who were like, hey, do you want to get together tonight, write a bunch of sketches, and then stay up all night talking about them, and then go perform them tomorrow, and then do right. that all again yeah. for 10 years? It's perfect training, though, like, right? That, that's what it was. Right. And I, yeah, and I met, I met a bunch of people from SNL through doing that. Like Horatio, I met Horatio Sands and started doing like improv shows with him going to colleges and doing improv shows. Now, this whole time, are you contacting Lorne Michaels and saying, no, hey, man? No. no, not at all. I'm just hoping that someday somebody will come up to me and say, do you want to audition for the show? So did some, is that what happened? Somebody said to you, do you want to audition? I mean, like, it's that it's that thing where it's like you're around for a couple of years and, and you get to a point at UCB where you've been there. Like, I started teaching there and then and right. then I started a touring company there and you're going all over the place and then you start hearing, like, oh, I hear they're auditioning for SNL. And How many years do I have to put in at Upright Citizens Brigade before I get a job at SNL, if I'm you? Four? 
Uh, no, I think I did like maybe eight or ten. Eight to ten years. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I was, you paid your fucking dues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what like Belushi and all those guys did. They were with well, National yeah, Lampoon. That, I mean, yeah, they did Lampoon forever, and right. then now, and yeah, you, I, whenever somebody says, "How do you get on SNL?" I say, "Spend ten years with." A bunch of people who like doing what you do and getting as good at it as possible. So the point is that it's never <laughs> as easy as it looks. I mean, it's not like you just get on Saturday Night Live. You got to put in ten fucking years working at Pizzeria Uno, <laughs> and so, right? Because the whole time you're at Citizens Brigade, there they yeah. ain't paying you jack shit, right? What no. are they paying you over there? Uh, w it wasn't it wasn't a payment thing. It was just like you you. Uh, well, I would get paid for doing like the touring company and for teaching and stuff right. there. But it was more just like thank you for letting me get up on stage wow. every, any night of the week. I mean, like it would be eleven o'clock and me and my buddy would run in. Uh, I had a sketch group called Buffoons. Uh, it was me and this guy Charlie Sanders, who's a writer for Key and Peele, and Eugene Cordero, who's been on The Office and stuff. Uh, and we would just show up at 11 o'clock, literally grab props from the back room and be like, what can we do with this? And then at midnight, we would do a show. Wow. And it was just that trial and error of learning it. And In then, that 10-year period, though, was your family on your ass to maybe get a real career because you were just wasting your time at Citizens Brigade? Um, I think they they knew that there was no way I was going to do anything else. Like They were yeah. also they were very supportive. My dad was more quiet about it. Right. But my mom was always super supportive of it. But, right. like, I remember the day where they were like, I think they're going to make me a bar manager at Uno's, and it's either that or stop doing <laughs> Uno's and go try and do comedy for free. Right. And I did it. Like, I just quit. Wow. And then went and hoped for the best. But within four Did you ever doubt yourself during those 10 years? Oh, of, of course. Well, you think it's time, like, right? what am I doing? Right. Like, I mean, this is your life. <laughs> yeah. Can you you're get laid going, during like, I spent the last five years literally making stuff up that I'm never going to be able to use again. Right. Like, and it's all gone. Yeah, but uh, but those like people were entertained. Uh, yeah. 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 I kept a lot of stuff. and that. The, but that's the thing. Like, my audition process was excruciating for getting SNL. But that whole time that it was going on, I would just write and write and write. So it was like, just in case they actually say you can get on the show, then I'm like, I'll have 50 sketches ready to go. And within two weeks, you blow through all of those. Can you get laid uh, <laughs> at that point in your life when you're working at Pizzeria Uno? I mean, is it or like, are, are you living at home? Where are you yeah, living? Yeah, it's, it's got to be awful. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean people crazy. have to understand that. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of back and forth. Like, I, I lived in the city for a while, then I moved back home for a little while. Then I was living in Brooklyn. When you moved back home, is it the most defeating thing in the world? I mean, you're already like an older guy. You're working at, uh, I mean, it's got to just be a nightmare. There were a couple nights of going home from Pizzeria Uno with a box of wings at 2 o'clock in the morning and like having <laughs> to, to be quiet house. to my parents' house. And I was like, yeah, it's and time to. And you're in your late 20s. <laughs> How old are you? Yes. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Well, I, I think I'd moved out at that, at that point. Like right. I was still in my early 20s at that point. I wasn't oh. that much of a, of a. You know, and then you think about all the guys who don't make it. You know, and then and, and then they've wasted their ten years of. Like, well, that was the worst day of my life. Was uh, I remember I, it, it had started coming around that they might want me to audition for the show, and uh, I sent in a tape and I didn't hear anything at first. And Who do then, you send the tape to? Lorne, attention, Lauren Michaels. Uh, no, it was like t uh, to Lindsay Shook as one of the one of the producers on the show. Right. Um, and she actually showed it to Marcy Klein. And then I got called in, and I couldn't believe it, and I went in and, and auditioned, and just to be in the studio alone and to see Lorne sitting there and to do it. Everybody describes that I, yeah, moment as I, just earth-shattering, right? Every single time I walk through the studio, there's this one section of the studio that's like, you go underneath the bleachers, and there's just all the, it's where all the lights and all the stuff are, and uh, every time I walk through there, I still get chills, because that's the, the first thing I saw. And then I remember walking out, and seeing the door, and I was like, it's so far away. Like, I was going to come through the door for a bit. Right. Then I was like, it's so far away. It, like, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do that I bit. So eat I up all to, my time yeah, walking. exactly. But, so, uh, Lauren, so, so the audition, what everyone says is true. Like, when, when Jimmy Fallon's on here, he says, it's Lauren just sitting there. Jimmy claims he's the only guy who ever actually made Lauren laugh in the audition. Did you get any laughs from Lauren? I, did, I, I, I feel like I did, yeah. yeah. Um, it, uh, I, I think I was told, too, also, like, they're not going to laugh. Like, no one's going to laugh. <laughs> Great. But I, 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 I had a weird thing. I auditioned twice. Like, the first time I auditioned was on the SNL stage, and it was like, there was a table, and it's kind of in the darkness, and there's one 
single light on Lauren, and you can see him, and you know he's there. Oh, my God. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> An audience of one. Well, in my mind, you right. know what I mean? Like, it's like there was a spotlight on just him. But what like, was your strategy? Don't look at Lauren or look at him? My strategy was um, get in and get out. Right. Like, I practiced the same five minutes for about a year and a half. Oh, my God. And what was the five minutes? Was it just impressions? My first audition was rough. I don't even know how I, I got it. Uh, I did um, a couple characters that I've done on the show. Um, I did... I'm, I don't, I don't, I've don't. I never been a fan of impressions. I'm not very good at doing impressions. So which like, is I weird, I did, because that's what everyone does. Which yet. is what everyone does on they there. They tell you yeah. to do that, though, don't I they? I play a lot of shapes. Like, right. Uh, like <laughs> but don't they tell you to audition with, with uh, impressions? It was impressions? like you, a couple characters and a couple impressions. I think I did Nathan Lane. I think I did... <laughs> I did what a, was that like? Um, it was the dumbest joke in the world, and I, I'm almost embarrassed of it. I just said that it was Nathan Lane for the Hamburger Society, and I sang some song that he was in Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. I right. did something peculiar, something, and I was like, something for everyone, eat a hamburger tonight, and that was it. It was the <laughs> dumbest joke in the world. Lauren wasn't laughing? Uh, I think he was laughing at, like, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think, I think that was also... Part of what got me the show was like I'm not the best impressionist in the world, but I'm I'm willing to go out there and take like risks. An idiot. But but yet here you practice for a year and a half for your first audition, and you came up with Nathan Lane in the hamburger <laughs> thing. I mean, why? why, why I how do you explain with, uh, that? Uh, I don't because I, I don't do impressions. I did Silent Bob. Uh, I did Kevin Smith because I just look like I'm just fat, <laughs> and uh, I did Hurley from Lost, uh, oh. trying to open a jar of chili. And it was just me trying to open a jar of chili and saying, dude, every once in a while. Like, I just went for, I tried to go for bits rather than actual impressions. Right. But I auditioned and then. But that's creative, just being hurly yeah, and I saying, it dude, was... <laughs> I think that's funny. Yeah, who I've met now, Jorge Garcia, he's the nicest dude in the world. What's and he like... doing now? Like, can he work again or is he oh, just Oh, yeah, typecat? he's been working ever since. He's doing a bunch of stuff. What, name one thing he's doing. He was on um, Alcatraz and now he's doing another pilot. Oh, okay. Yeah, All he's right. actually doing really well. Yeah. Super nice guy. But has he lost any weight or, I mean, I'm worried about him. No, he's great. He's you know, I lay awake at night worrying I, about Jorge. <laughs> God, be careful. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He's going to be okay. Right. Do you think it would hurt your career if you lost weight? Because you're a little bit chubby, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would hurt. It would probably help me in life. Yeah, but once like, that. Don't yeah, you want to exactly. work? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy. Uh, when Do you I see purposely myself not on, work out and, and keep your weight a certain way? I avidly not work out, but not for any reason, just right. other than laziness. So you get your first audition <laughs> and it goes horribly. No, it, it actually went really well. Right. And then but then uh, And then you sit by I the phone waiting. Came, yeah, I came in, I met with Lauren and What's that like? Uh, it, it, you go to his office. It felt like it felt. I felt like I. I felt like I won like fantasy camp. Like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> yeah. I felt like like I can't. Like I've I've loved this show for so long. Like and it's it's never gonna happen because you want it so bad though. And they say to you, okay, now you audition. Now you're gonna come in and meet Lauren. You go into his office. What do you wear? Like do you wear a suit and tie? Um. I didn't. I've. I. I, I didn't. I. I think I just wore what I had on that day. Yeah. I was more just. But you like, know, you think it through, right? I mean, you don't oh, just. Oh, every put on... single thing that I was. I. I went through. Like, if he asks you how your day was, what do you say? You say <laughs> it was great because I want to seem positive. Like, oh yeah. Right. And then you walk in, and it was completely like. The best. It was like he was the nicest guy in the world. And Hello, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a line. What do you mean he was the best? Well, just I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I felt almost like I was on a first date. Like he was like, where'd you grow up? What's your family like? You know, do like you ask him questions stuff. about himself? Um, I did. Because I, I like, well, he was like, uh, are you a fan of the show? And I was like, I, I was like, I can probably tell you every host and musical guest in order or every cast <laughs> member in order. Like, I was like, I'm a maniac. Oh, so you're nuts. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, <laughs> how long um, do you have? And long? then he threw me out the window. Um, <laughs> Isn't it like, like, a, like being a bull rider in the rodeo? Like, you see how long you can sit in Lauren's office before he throws you out? There, there is an element of like, Get out. Get, yeah, right. Get, get out I, I would be like, aren't I like, taking up too much of your time? I remember a specific meeting where, like, I got offered a job, and I, I went and go, went to ask him if I could do it. Like, if Because, like, when you're shooting the show, it's really hard to do other right. stuff because you're there so much. And I remember he was like, well, I don't want you to do it. Uh, you know, just uh, don't do it. And I was like, okay, no sweat. <laughs> And then, like, there was that moment of, like, just get out. Get out of the room. You did okay. This is very early on. Right, right. 
And then I was like, how am I doing on the show? And he was like, you're fine. Just go. And I was like, ah, see, I did it. I screwed it up. <laughs> how am I doing? Yeah, like, you know, like back then I was still so like, I just wanted to do a good job yeah, on the show. and you got to be lovable. Now you it's want a lot easier talking to him. Like he's, 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 uh. You feel a little more secure in your position. Yeah, and, and every single suggestion, like, you know, I can remember like him saying like, change this thing or don't like, or don't do this in this sketch. Don't wear this wig, uh, you, you know, or, or something like that. And I remember at the time being like, what? That makes no sense. But he's always right. <laughs> You've he's never, well. he's never been wrong. Well, the guy's got an amazing ability to pick talent and yeah. it's, it's quite an honor. I mean, where, what other job could you really get besides Saturday Night Live doing this kind of thing where you write and perform? It's one of those things where, where you go in every week and you're like, I can't believe they, first of all, I can't believe they still do it. Like we actually get this show on air every week. Cause yeah. it's, I mean, it's the only live you when do you actually get show. it together? Like, like you write on what Monday and Tuesday, and then they pick their. Today is our first day back, so tonight I'll go in around like you know five or six, and uh, uh, we'll have the pitch meeting. Uh, Melissa McCarthy is hosting this week. Right, that's a good get. Yeah, she's yeah. hosted before. She's amazing. Uh, right, she was phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, we all pile into Lauren's office, sit down. And pitch ideas. A lot of them are. Oh, is that real where it goes ideas. on? It's like it's in Lauren's office. You pitch. Yeah, yeah. We all. Sit How many on the people ground. pitch? Because there's writers too, right? Yeah, probably about maybe I'm guessing I'm um, forty, maybe. And isn't it wow. like like even the guys who um, are pitching and stuff like they're all breathing on your neck. This is why I say it's like Lord of the Flies. Like most of the writers want to be on camera, so they're jealous of you. Well, yeah, a, a lot of them, and well, they just want to—they want to get a sketch in so that right. they have something to do that week. Because right. there's nothing—I mean, for me especially, there's nothing worse than like I'm kind of light in the show this week, but you're still around a lot. But you want—you just want to—you want to do it. You How many be sketches do you have ready for today's pitch meeting? Uh, none. It's none. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, it—I it, it, I have I have ideas. I have like ideas and stuff. Like you'll pitch, go. What's, but... your, what's your best idea to pitch this week in the pitch meeting? You know what you. I got. was walking here this morning and I saw a dude walking with a snowboard, and it's in the middle of the city and I just thought I don't know why that made that made me laugh so I'm trying to figure out something about that snowboard Melissa McCarthy guy, is a right? professional <laughs> professional snowboarder who keeps challenging people but they're nowhere near snow will you try to think of a of a sketch for um, but pitch is Ma- Melissa McCarthy so that you can work like 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 uh, you should be like okay I got a sketch for you to pitch you ready uh, yeah okay. let's hear it so Melissa McCarthy is Jenny McCarthy's cousin. <laughs> all right? Isn't she really? Yeah, which yeah. that's what everyone yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. It's like for you know, isn't that really? So you should be Jenny McCarthy's other cousin <laughs> in a wig and stuff. <laughs> and I could see where, you know, the two of you sitting oh, around, no. you know, the, all the McCarthy's that don't look like Jenny McCarthy <laughs> bitching about it. That's what actually do you think? pretty great. Pitch that's that a much better stuff. pitch than the guy with no snowboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like my pitch. I don't know. And you're mad at Jenny and you're all but but you all go around saying how great Jenny is and how much you love her, but you can see you're seething inside. But see, that's that's the crazy thing about it is like you'll go in with that idea like that like just piece of an idea right. and then you'll sit there for seven hours or eight hours trying to write it all night long and you'll be and then you hand it in and then it gets in and five minutes later Jenny McCarthy's there and then it's on TV and you're like what the hell just happened right <laughs> or they say yeah 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 and you think this is brilliant and you sit there and then they reject it oh you do it at the table it bombs and then you never see it again I've, I've done a lot of those too please pitch my idea yeah. forget the snowboarding guy. I don't know where you're going with that snowboarding me neither <laughs> well it's fun. now it's like pitches pitches like there's a lot of people who just kind of fail their way through pitch right because you don't want to give away your idea on monday because then when it comes to wednesday and we're at the read through they're like oh i know what's going to happen in this because you already oh it's like there's always a psychology to there's like a holding lot of back. psychology to it but now it used to be crazy in the beginning now it's just that's how the job goes why don't you pitch you being kim jong-un because that's like he's in the fucking news i've done it a bunch uh, oh you have i've well i did it i've done it a bunch and it didn't get on the show and then we just did it recently i was kim jong-un and jay farrow was dennis rodman Oh, good. On, oh, great. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, you see, because th- that must have been a week ago or something, because I'm behind a week. Yeah, it was okay. uh, Yeah, it was recently. Oh, yeah, because you make a good Kim Jong-un. Yeah, I look like a weird little dude. Yeah, yeah. but you want that. <laughs> you want You want to do that. I don't know, dude. Yeah, I, I, I did it, and then instantly was like, I'm like, this guy's going to... I hope he never sees this. Like, he's going <laughs> yeah, to blow us gonna up. He's going to blow you up. Because I'm doing a... 
Yes. How about Kim <laughs> Jong Un wants to date Jenny McCarthy's other cousin, and you play both <laughs> roles, and you go Done. back and forth. Perfect. So you will go in today, and you will pitch the snowboard idea, but you don't. I don't really, know what I'll pitch yet, but, but you don't. Yeah. You got to know what you're going to pitch. You can't go in there and just sort oh, of. Oh, I've definitely walked in there and looked around the room and heard other people's pitches, and then been like. Uh, the worst pitch I've ever had, which was one where like I had nothing that well, because you you try and come up with so many ideas every right. day and That's it's right. hard. I walked in there one day and I think it was John Ham was the host and I had nothing, um, <laughs> or I had stuff that I wanted to write but I didn't want to give it away. Right. So I was like, I'll just try and say something crazy and I think I pitched to him. I was like, so you're t- it's a sketch called Tall Napoleon. And you're just you're tall, so you're you're a nice guy because you never you right, never, never had any issues. You never had height. any issues, and he was like, "What?" Is, I was like, "Well, I have a theme song for it. It's just it's he's tall, tall Napoleon. He's not small anymore, Leon." And I was like, "This is the dumbest thing I've ever said out loud." And just by the look on his face, I was just like, "Well, that that, that was that pitch." So John Hamm <laughs> can reject Saturday Night Live pitches by by Saturday Night Live cast members. Um, well, I don't know if rege- I mean he rightfully should have in right, that right. case, but like uh, I like Tall Napoleon. I don't yeah. know. There's something there. I think yeah, you got to keep I, developing too. that. Yeah, I've been use- I've been trying to get that done for years. Um, what about uh, Tall Kim Jong Un? Yeah, because <laughs> I think he's pissed too that he's short. Yeah, I think we did like a Kim Jong Un talk show where he had his own talk show and he like had. Like his guests were like dragons, and like he had like he rode in on a rocket, but it never got. It on. never got on. Uh, yeah, all these things that never get on. It's so I mean, weird. there's five or six things a week. I can't even imagine having to get up in front of forty people and pitch a sketch. It must be awful. That's the worst part of the week for me now. Yeah, because especially now, because you, in the beginning it was I'm trying to impress them, and now it's like we all know that we're half of us are faking it right and we're all in a room <laughs> all grown adults sitting on the ground are there, <laughs> are there people and, and, in there uh, who are just brilliant at pitches and it just fucking makes you crazy oh yeah oh yeah but i, I but it's also it it there there are some people that like there's a guy john mulaney who's got a show coming out on nbc who, he's one of the most brilliant comedians i've ever seen just as far as like he understands he knows what to say there's another guy michael bryan who's amazing these are guys who write um writers yeah, yeah. uh, uh they're, they're, they act also but they're writers on the on, on the show right um and then there's the people who don't pitch as well, and they're kind of known for that. And like it's, but that's fine because right. it, it really doesn't matter because <laughs> it, it's all left. And the, the second you're done speaking, it's over, and no one remembers it. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I'm, Although I'm, maybe you don't know. Maybe they're just goofing on you behind your back. Ooh, you that just don't that know. too. Yeah. Uh, or somebody will come in. Uh, there's one of the writers, uh, Rob Klein, came in one day and had a pitch, said a pitch, something about. Uh, so you're a guy who works at an office, uh, but you're, you, you have the same thing as a shark has. If you stop moving, you'll die. So you have to keep moving. And I, I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. And I went over to him. I was like, dude, that's hilarious. If you write that, let me know. I want to work on it. He's like, I'm not writing that. That was, that was bullshit yeah. pitch. <laughs> I was like, I mean, he put that out and now just... I feel like an asshole because I'm like, I think that's brilliant. You're a genius. Yeah. Yeah. No, Clearly, no, no. I should not be directing that show. <laughs> it, and, and so th- the story goes that you auditioned once. Lorne meets with you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you don't get the call or you did? I, it was very vague. Like, I, uh, it was very vague. Like, I, 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 I have a definite recollection of him saying the phrase, like, well, maybe we'll start you in January. Wow. And I, and you I probably pissed your pants. Well, I did. And then I was like, so are, are you are you saying I have the job and you're trying to figure out when you're going to hire, like when I'm starting, or right. are you saying, like, I didn't know what was happening. Right. And at the time, I had hair down to here. Like, I had very long hair and a big beard yeah. when I auditioned. And uh, he was like, why don't you cut your hair and shave your beard and, you know, come back and we'll see <laughs> what's under there, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, right. and, uh, see what's doing. Yeah, I did. I, and, like, I went home. I shaved. I cried like a baby because I had a beard for I had a lot of crying. <laughs> yeah, one of those uh, big, long, <laughs> like like Billy Gibbons beards? Not, not huge, but, like, uh, you know, a size of, like, a Zach Galifianakis type wow. beard. Doesn't and, that turn um, off the ladies? I mean, it is. it does make it harder to get a woman probably, when you have a mountain beard. Probably, but I mean, cover most of the face will probably <laughs> is that the idea probably helping it out yeah um uh so then, I, I went uh, but i went home and almost immediately the writer strike happened oh right so for 14 months that whole or that whole pro well the whole process was 14 months but i guess about eight nine months so you don't hear anything i was sitting at home going i think my life's dream just came true but i have no idea and there's How no awful. way i can ask or find out 
And I just literally just sat there like in limbo waiting. And then uh, when the writer's strike ended... 14 months. Yeah. Oh, my God. When the, and, and this was also like with seven months or eight months of lead up of like, you're going to audition. So it was like this big, big, big lead up. And then it just went away like that. So for 14 months, you don't hear from anybody? No. And then... Uh, Oh my God. When the writer strike ended, I the phone rang and it was SNL, and I was like, "I think this is it." Yeah. And then they called me up and they said, "Maya Rudolph had a baby during the writer strike, so we have to hire a girl." Oh my oh. God! Poor so, you. I, I mean, that was the worst. Like I you, was like, "It's over. That's it." Boy, like, I was like, "I came up. so close, and it's over." And, and did you think it was really over? One hundred percent. I was like, "That's it." It's your over. lifelong dream. I mean, well, you had pictures. Just... Did you tell Lorne you had pictures of him hanging up in, his, in your room? When I you were did a kid? not. I did not. I don't think I've ever told him that. Did um... you offer to have a sex change so you could be the <laughs> new female? Uh... I can be a girl. I pretty much all I job. do is play ladies on the show half the time. Anyway, this is so heartbreaking in a way because you it really... was it was the worst. Like it was the worst. But but it was also this feeling of like, well, it was never like. I mean, like it was never going to happen. Like I can't believe I got that far. Like at least I got to meet him and go to the studio. What were you doing for the fourteen months? Were you still over at that uh, brigade or whatever? Yeah, I was doing that yeah. stuff and just a lot of sitting and, and thinking. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, and a lot of writing just in case. Right. And then I ended up getting very, very lucky. Like, I had done, like, a couple bits on Conan, uh, O'Brien's old show. Like, right. I would do, like, little little things here and there before commercial breaks. But so I got, Lauren probably knew you from that. Um, I doubt it. Right. Um, it was just little things. Uh, but uh, I ended up... Uh, getting a couple movies like oh. right after that like I got two movies what'd you do uh, I was in The Invention of Lying that Ricky Gervais movie this is like I'm talking like three lines right and then I was uh, in the movie When in Rome with Kristen Bell and Josh Demel. So even though you're getting movies, you still want that Saturday Night Live bit. Well, I was like in a movie and they sent me to Rome to go shoot and I met Danny DeVito and I talked to him about SNL and how I almost got it. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, that was like, your story, the guy who almost got it, which yeah, is such pretty, a loserish kind of story. A little bit, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then I went to Rome and shot that movie and I was just happy. Like I was starting to get like, well, at least I don't have to, you know, at least I wasn't crazy by stopping bartending yeah. and then yeah you're working yeah, yeah and God. i had worked on that audition for like two years and then i got a call on like a monday that seth was seth and bill Hader were doing this uh web series and they asked me to be in it and i was like oh this is my consolation prize like right. they're just being nice and i went in and did that and a, and it was just a couple days of doing this thing and i was like well at least they were really nice right and then like the next day, Seth called me up. It was like a Monday and was like, why don't you come in and audition on Wednesday? Seth gets to do that? Um, well, he's the head writer and, oh, you know, he, know he's, he's big in charge. I, I, I'm not positive. I think Seth mentioned it to me that, like, right. he's coming back in. And, and, uh, and then it was like I had to come up with all new material in oh. two days. You mean you had nothing? Nothing. Oh. Uh, and uh, So now all of a sudden you have to audition again? Re-audition again. In front of Lauren, the whole spiel. Yeah, the whole spiel. This time it was on Conan's stage uh, because there was something going on in like, the Olympics or something. I don't remember what was going on, but something yeah. was going on upstairs. And uh, I went back in, and this one in particular, like I was like, well, they, they know me and they know what I've done, so I'm just going to try and go in there and show them, like, not Bobby's audition, but show them, like, hey, this is kind of the dumb stuff that I find funny. Yeah. Like, on the subway there, uh, somebody, there was a guy, and he came on and called somebody an asshat, and I thought I'd never heard that <laughs> term before. That's funny. So I just improvised a bit where I was a guy, uh, a guy selling um, something called ass hats that were just tiny hats. For, like I, I literally was just improvising. You mean, you're kidding me. I got this up there. Your... I was like, I'll do snagglepuss from like, <laughs> from from like, uh, like from I, the I, I said from one of my first impressions, I was like, this is a uh, snagglepuss from Hanna Barbera, and I was just like, heavens to Murgatroyd, and like it was the dumbest thing ever. I was like, they'll never put this on the show, but like at least they'll be like, this guy's nuts. Maybe we should right, keep right. Him around. And I ended up doing snagglepuss on the show, which is ridiculous. Well, is it, doesn't that piss you off? I hear your first audition, you prepare for two years, and your second audition was probably better just sort of like well, winging it. It was definitely better as far... Yeah, but I wouldn't have had the confidence if I didn't do it the first time. And I did stuff, like I did stuff for my first audition, but I also threw in like a lot of just like dumb little bits. Well, the moral of the story is if you hadn't done 10 years in that brigade, oh, you would yeah. 
never have the confidence to go on a stage and just do dumb shit like snaggle push. No, that I, takes I, a lot learned, of balls. I learned how to do everything at Upright Citizens Brigade. In a way, though, when you look at that tape that's on the internet of Jimmy Fallon's first audition. Well, that's what I used to. I watched that. Uh, I watched that. Because that's when, the best audition I ever saw. It, it is. It's like Phil Hartman's. It's, yeah. it's like there's, there's a couple auditions where you watch them and it's like, here's. 40 things, 40 different things I can do. Like, if anybody ask, ever asks me, how do, what, what should I do for my audition? Like, I have a lot of comedian friends who audition, you know. Yeah. I'm like, just what, like, show them as many different things that you can do so that they can go, like, he can fit this type, this, you yeah. can play game show host, you can do whatever, like. So you did Snagglepuss, then you went I to the guy with the ass crazy hat. Stuff. Then what did you do? <laughs> then what did you go into? Do you remember? Um, you must remember. Is your is your um, audition online like like everyone else? I doubt it. Well, because yeah. theirs on theirs is on their best of DVD. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I, I, I did a lot of crazy stuff. I used to do this bit when I was a kid that I thought was hilarious. When I, whenever I was driving, I would roll down the window and ask like pretend I was asking somebody for directions, and they'd be like, "Yes." And I'd be like, "Hey, I'm sorry. Do you know how to get to our like uh, how to?" Oh, and now I always say Arbolato Drive. Uh, and they'd be like, no, I don't know how to get there. And I'd be like, oh, okay. All you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go straight for about three <laughs> blocks. And like, I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. You gave them direction. Because they would just look at right. me like I was insane. And then right. I would just be like, all right, good luck, Godspeed. And I would drive away. So how do you work that into your audition? I said, I literally said, this is a bit I used to do when I was a kid. And I sat down in a chair and pretended to do, like, I just did a lot of stuff like that. Like, I, wow, I did a like, lot, like of, a lot of dumb bits. shit. Yeah, because that's what I'm going to give to the show. And that's what SNL is. Like, I'm not some Somebody like like a Taron Killam or somebody like a Daryl Hammond who can just or like Jay Farrow who's just a mimic and like Bill Hader can just do, Bill Hader does the greatest Howard Stern in the world. By he the does. Way. Yeah, really? I want to hear absolutely it. Absolutely phenomenal. Because no one's ever really been able to do it the right way. I mean, I think we tried to do one once, or I tried to get Bill early on when I was on the show to do. We were going to do. He was going to. I was going to be Artie. Right. But I, I, we never we never wrote it. But he does a, I he love does an him. amazing Howard. Oh, he's I some would talent. Love huh? To see yeah. that. Yeah. He's a genius. I mean, like he's a genius. It's, it's crazy. Like the vo like he he just picks up voices like that. I don't have that. I'm the guy on the show who's like, I'm going to be this weird older age, middle middle age lady who's trying to have sex with Adam Levine because I think it's funny. They make you a lady all the time. Yeah, it's they do. It's funny to see you as a lady. Yeah, I yeah. get it. Yeah, right, right. But also, I mean, do they ever say to you, hey, listen, we need you to come up with an impression. Go watch this on TV and do it. Yeah, that happened recently and it's terrifying because like you want to you want to hit so hard because like there are people on the show that do amazing impressions. There was one recently, and I've never done this at SNL before. Um, Seth pitched an idea when the, those, the Carrie Diaries, the um, right. the, 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 the prequel like to the, the, prequel, Sex, and the, the Sex and the City, he yeah. pitched an idea to Adam Levine where we would do the Sopranos Diaries, where it was all the Sopranos <laughs> in high school. That's great. And I was like, dude, that's brilliant. <laughs> and and I've never done Tony. it before, but I was like, I was like, I will work. Starting now, I will work till Saturday on a Tony Soprano impression. Like, I really want to try doing this. Right. And it's one of my favorite sketches I've ever been in on the show. What did your I Tony was, sound like? I kind of just talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> you it's got it. A lot of heavy breathing. Yeah, but, but yeah, I got it. But that's the first time since I've been on the show where I sat there for 10 hours the night before so we were shooting. So you can do it. I'm I'm I, I'm terrified of impressions. Like I'm not. I can't just pick it up. So I have to sit there and figure it out and yeah, do the work. Yeah, it's hard. How do you figure it out? Because like you kind of like. I remember you asking Daryl once, and he's like, "Look for mannerisms and look for this kind of stuff." And like Jay Farrow will sit down for two minutes and watch somebody do something, and then then he's got a full impression. Yeah, because you say Tony Soprano, I think about like what 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 would I do? You know, like it's like yeah, it's like uh, yeah. And uh, uh, <laughs> I just try and uh, I just watched him and what's like, the phrase you do? to get into the Tony Soprano character? Um, I know... Uh, uh, I, I would just go, calm. Or, what was <laughs> every that? Time oh, calm. He, every time he called her, calm. Calm. Like, calm. <laughs> like, calm. It was just that. like, Or just repeating something that he would say over and over again. like, And then just trying to get it right. And the, just the heavy breathing and stuff. But <sighs> like... But yeah, but then you're playing them as a kid, so it doesn't really matter. But no, like, I just so wanted to do a good job because I thought the idea was so funny, and I just wanted to be in it. But and like, don't you kind of say to yourself, if this sketch kills, that means I'm always on every week doing that thing for a while. Well, like then the there's the hope that like, oh, maybe they'll let me do you know James Gandolfini in another sketch at some point, or they'll let me do that. But th but then there's the days where you come in and you're like, hey, I've been working on like a pendulette, and it's not really that great, but I'm trying. And they're like, okay, you're Wendy the Snapple Lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like that guy who does 
what up with that? He, Keenan. Yeah. Keenan, because like once you, that character took off, they put him on every week doing that thing. Uh, yeah, it's nice once you. I mean, that's. Uh, some people, some people, you know, say like, "Oh, they do that all the time," or like they about reoccurring stuff. But I love it. That's what SNL is. Like, yeah. you, you want to see it. You want to see it again. Like, they, it makes it comfortable. Like, is it weird when you show up and uh, like a guy's gone? Like the new season starts and like two people are gone, and, and uh, I mean, it's like a rotating Lord of the Flies. It well, really it's, is. It's, it's 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 weird. It's it's very few and far between since I've been on the show. A lot of people have left, but the, it's it's like. I keep saying this, and like I don't want to offend anybody, but it's like Vietnam rules. Like it's like I don't want to become your friend. Right. <laughs> like in yeah. the beginning, I don't, like, I don't want to know about your family because <laughs> then right. I'm going to feel bad. But like you become close with these people, and they're all wildly talented. They got there, yeah. And even the people that have left the show are doing amazingly well because they're talented people. Did but you sometimes ha- you just like you know, like I was the chubby guy when I came in, so I fit a role. Like you know, like and it was like that. I was very happy about it. Do you worry about the day that, you know, Lauren finally says to you, okay, it's time for you to leave Saturday Night Live, and then, like, all of a sudden, now you got to... You know, some people do oh, so well when they course. leave. And then other, like even Jimmy Fallon had a, a, a film career and a couple of his films tanked and now he's got the... the yeah, now the, he's Jimmy Fallon. Now he's Jimmy Fallon, but but uh, it's really hard to find yourself after Saturday Night Live sometimes. Yeah, and th- I'm in the tail end of my, like, or, or not the tail end, but like I'm, I'm definitely, I've been there longer than not, so... Now it's starting to go like, well, it's a seven-year contract. I'm in my fifth year. Like, I have to start. My biggest dream right now is that Chris Christie will run for president (laughs) so that I can stay on for a little bit longer. Uh, So, Chris, if you're listening, please help me. Do you (laughs) you worry if they hire another guy who fits your type, like a chubby guy or something? Um, Not really. I mean, like, I mean, if they hired somebody who did stuff like me, I'd be like, why'd you do that? (laughs) But, like, there was a guy that came on this year. His name's Tim Robinson. Right. And, uh... He's more in my type than say like a Jason Sudeikis, like like you know. And I remember first seeing his picture, being like, "Oh no, uh oh." <laughs> but now I've met him, and he's different. One of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Send him a diet book. I'll yeah. send it to him. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> he's so you, he's thinner than so I. So do you? Are you developing now an exit strategy? I mean, it's not like you sound like a guy who's like overly thought out his career. But <laughs> no, I no, still can't. You don't even overly think out the writing. I don't meeting. overly think out the day. <laughs> right. So you. So you have. Have an exit strategy. I feel right. Like in seven years, it could, that could be it. The well, seven-year contract is up, and they it could... definitely could be that. My also my biggest fear is that one day Lauren will just show up and go. You know what? I'm done. <laughs> like that's the bigger fear. Is yeah. like is like I'll be and he's just seems... hitting my stride or something, and he'll be like, Yeah, no, forty years is good. I'm done. Yeah, and it seems like it, it seems like not only could he be done, but like it's also like he could be done with you. You know? At any point, yeah. Yeah, and it'll just be, you know, and it's, he apparently has no problem letting go of people. He's just kind of like, well, well he, it's time. He, uh, he, he, you, uh, he can't. I mean, right. like, he's also, but then again, he's also given, you know, 127 comedians their entire life. <laughs> but <laughs> you know? some of those people on Saturday Night Live, he goes up to and says, I want to uh, produce some things with you. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's that's the goal is like, you know, hope, like, you know, like, now that I'm, now that I've been on the show for a while and I'm not as terrified of like I gotta get a sketch on I gotta get a, I gotta get something on every single week or else I'm done right like now it's like on breaks when like when we have a three week break I used to sit there and try and come up with characters now I like maybe write a movie or maybe write right. you know you're trying you're going like it's the first time I was a bartender and a comedian for my entire right. life so now you're going what you, uh, oh this is a career now everything depends on this Lorne Michaels right now with you he's your world he is your life what do you get him for Christmas? Uh, you know, like, you've got to think that through when he's that important to you. Yeah, I, I always get him card. Like, I, he, he'll give us birthday. I always give him a card. I always try to be nice. Just a card, no gift. A card? Uh, a card. <laughs> That's not impressive. <laughs> no, Who did we speak is. to that got him a canoe, that actually bought him a canoe because oh, he knew right. about that in the hand? Well, I think it was Jimmy. Was that Jimmy? Maybe. Yeah. Jimmy? Yeah, yeah like, maybe, bought him a yeah. canoe. Like, you got to no, you got to step that shit up. Yeah, maybe two canoes for yeah, Christmas. Two canoes. Get him more canoes. <laughs> what, a business canoe and a uh, relaxing canoe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> canoe. Get him a kayak. Be a little different. Some kind of water thing. 
Oh, yeah, you got to think that through. Speaking also, of, I'm not sure. Yeah, he might be Jewish. I'm not sure. So uh, Lauren is Jewish. Doesn't matter. Maybe? Does I don't not know. matter. I'll still get him two canoes. Yeah, Christmas. what kind of a Jew drives around in a canoe? <laughs> right. On a Christmas. <laughs> That's right. On Christmas. Uh, now, Bobby's got a new movie out. Speaking of movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is smart. I like this strategy. <laughs> Let's do some. Did you have to go to Lauren and ask him if you could do this movie? Uh, Yeah. You yeah. did. And he says, okay. Now, why okay to this, but not okay to the other shit? Well, this was during the summer. Okay. So. Uh, there's some, like, when you're first on the show, you know, they want you to build your your following from the show. But now right. that I've been on the show a little bit, now I get to He do... gives you the blessing. Yeah. All right. See, the new movie is called The Brass Teapot. Yes. And uh, now, what is this? Available on iTunes and video on demand. Oh, I see. So the movie is it's a coming small out, movie. Yeah, it's coming out April 5th, but right, right now you can watch it on demand and on iTunes. It's, oh, yeah. you can get it before it's in theater. Who, yes. are, you, who, are, you, uh, who are you starring with in this thing? Uh, Anybody I know? Juno Temple. Uh, Michael, Juno? Yeah, Juno Temple. Uh, Michael Angarano, uh, Alia Shawcat. Why are you laughing when you say this? <laughs> well, because because uh, I think I. <laughs> I'm Who are just, these people? Uh, yeah, no, they're they're all great. They're all good. Yeah, yeah. And they're you play people. what? You play uh, young Tony Soprano. I play their fat friend. I would yeah. like to see that. You play their fat friend. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Will you ever be the leading man? Now, Paul Giamatti pulled it off. He's not a leading man type. Yeah, but he's phenomenal. He yeah. is phenomenal. Um, hopefully, maybe someday. Yeah. You know, Seth Rogen like. Opened yeah. up the door for everybody, I feel like. Well, Absolutely. All, all of, you know, like, as far as, like, that kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. I th- I'm still waiting for someone to open the door for me in a movie. <laughs> what door needs to be opened for you? Uh, you know, the, uh, the awkward leading man. <laughs> I remember sitting there one day being super psyched reading that you were going to play the Scarecrow in Batman when I was a kid. I was and super I was, psyched, too. You, I was probably more psyched than you were. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know what? I read that, too, and it was absolutely no truth to it. I don't Amazing. Know where it, it, no, I don't, nobody had talked to you at all? <laughs> no one had spoken to me about being Scarecrow, <laughs> and yet I've always seen myself in some way, the next movie that I'd ever do after Private parts would be that I play a villain in some movie. Yeah, I was like didn't. totally psyched. I go, this has got to be great. Yeah. And I sat by the phone. Nothing happened. I walked around for a re- week telling everyone, like, did you hear that he might play this? And, they were and like, who looks more like a scarecrow than me? I mean, nobody has scared more crows than me. Uh, yes, Jay, you're on with uh, Bobby Moynihan. The new movie, The Brass Teapot. Did they pay anything for this, Bobby? No, or? I did it for cupcakes. You did? Yeah. Do, do, uh, do they pay you a lot of money on Saturday Night Live? You sure. <laughs> Do they though? <laughs> it's not a lot, right? No, it, it's, it, they got it, you. It gets, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, like it's another a variety words, show. They get you because there's the hope that you could be the next Belushi or the next uh, Ackroyd or yeah I I, I, I and I, I say this you know obviously in jest but like I would do it for free I would totally do it for do free do you have to have don't a roommate don't say that yeah, I don't know say that. I mean, you I think would. that but you don't ever say <laughs> do you have to have a roommate now still even though do you have your own apartment <laughs> no or? I have my own apartment you do have yeah. your own apartment yeah, yeah, yeah. alright okay Do you, someone told me you live in a dormitory Is I do sure? yeah. Yeah. I was actually going to ask Brilliant. if I could borrow some shoes to get home <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely alright uh uh, Jay, go ahead. Hey, hey now, Howard. Uh, I just want to say, Bobby, Bobby, you're the best cast member at SNL. You're my favorite. Oh, honestly. thanks, Jay. Well, I appreciate hey, it. You got it. And why don't you tell Howard about your uh, Sam Kinison impression? Hey, you do a oh, Sam Kinison, right? No, I do not. You do not? <laughs> I did one. But <laughs> what do you mean you did one? Why do you say it like that? Uh, I've, I, out of every impression I've ever done on the show, that's the one that gave me the most anxiety. Why? Really? Well, because he, like, it was, it was, uh, the bit was, it was when Top Gun had the, the, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, when Back to the Future had the uh, 25th anniversary. Yeah. And so the whole sketch was, like, uh, all these other actors that had auditioned for the roles, like, it was supposed to be, like, a DVD feature. Right, I think And one of them was Sam Kinison auditioning to play the Christopher Lloyd part. Right. And I just... Because of this show, there's there's people who do such amazing Sam Kinison impressions that I'm right. like, well, I'm never going to be able to do it that well. Oh, they assigned it to you. And they, they were said- like, you're Sam Kinison, and you just wrote it into it. And I was trying to think of somebody else from that time period that I could maybe, like, you know, maybe do. But then when I put the wig on and I put the whole costume on, beret, I'm like, it whole- kind of looks like it at least. Yeah. And I'm like, if I could just get one line quick in and out. What like, was you your know, line that you mastered? I didn't master it. I, that's the one thing when I see it, I cringe. Uh, Let I, me hear your Kinnison. I'll tell you if it's oh, cringe. Dude, it was awful. I'll be honest with I you. I just remember, like, I grabbed the mic with both hands because he did that a lot. Like, yeah. it was all about the physical the, thing. Yeah. Right. And I think it was just, so you're trying to tell me that you 
built a time machine out of a DeLorean! And like I just started <laughs> screaming and went through it as quickly as possible. It's hard to do. But it's it's there are people that do such a pitch perfect Kinnison that they it's do. like I, I just went like, hey, I'm in the costume I tried. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> were you ever a drug guy? Did you ever get into, you know, weed, coke, or any of that other stuff? No, no. Did I'm, you ever pretty, feel... I'm pretty lazy. I mean, like, the, the, yeah, you, you, you try stuff here drugs? and there, but like never, no, not anything hard, no. Because no. you're caught up in the whole sort of romanticism of, of Saturday Night Live, it like maybe you know you kind of felt like like Belushi you had to go through your dark period or or, or any of these. Guys. No, I mean like I have my fun, but like it never like Weed? I'm never doing cocaine. Yeah. yeah, never doing cocaine or like I was never I was never a big drinker either. My dad owned a liquor store. I never drank. That's weird, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it was yeah. super weird. But like, was he really into booze? Uh, yeah. 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 He drank super, a lot. Yeah, he said, hey, I'll start a liquor store. <laughs> he doesn't anymore. He's okay now. But, well, like, I just see what it does to your body. He had a problem like, for a while. Yeah, and I was just like, I'm, that, that's not, I'm not going that. I Thank can't, God. I can't go that Thank route. God you had the, the smarts to sort of not identify with your father and start drinking. Well, to, to, I mean, in a, this, is, this is awful to say, but I was almost like, I, yeah, I maybe would have if I didn't see it, how it affected him. And, and you know, it wasn't that bad. Like, I mean, now he wor- doesn't drink anymore. The worst possible place for a guy with drinking problem to work or to own is own a liquor it's store. A, it, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. He, he probably drank does he a still lot. Own the, <laughs> does he still own the liquor store? Uh, no, he's retired now. Oh, that's I good. see. Did he make a good living doing that? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. He he had this thing where he he he's very old school. He's very like Archie Bunker. He wouldn't uh, take he wouldn't have a credit card machine because he didn't want alcoholics <laughs> coming in <laughs> and charging everything. So he right. thought he was helping these people, but right. like then he had a heart of gold. Yeah, and right. but only took cash, and then his. Yeah, and then it didn't really work. Business went down. <laughs> sure, great. Like, people coming in, like, I want seven cases of champagne, paying with a credit card. He was like, nope, sorry. I like he was upset you want to be an actor. Like, hey, dude, what are you yeah. doing that's so great? Yeah. The Moynihan's are a very uh, hopeful people <laughs> that yes, everything's just going to work out. Uh, listen, it's, uh, it's great meeting you. Uh, uh, it's I'm an a honor big to fan you of too, yours. Man. And, and uh, are you supporting the family now with uh, all your SNL money? Hopefully soon, at yeah. some point, yeah. They're waiting for you. <laughs> uh, Bobby, uh, a lot of fun. What's your favorite character to do on SNL? Snooky? Oh, boy. Um, I like doing Drunk Uncle a lot right now, and uh, there are these two new characters uh, that I've been doing recently. Um, one was just this guy, this weird dude named Kirby who misses his kitty cat a lot. Um, <laughs> and then me and Cecily Strong, uh, one of the female cast members, do... Uh, uh, a sketch where we're people who keep getting fired and tell everybody who what they what we really think of them and oh I love we're really that. really yes. aggressive and it's just super. Yeah. It, when you do Snooky, what do they spray paint you? Yeah, yeah, airbrushed completely How long orange. Does that take? Um, it depends. Uh, the first time we did it, it took a while, but then like once we did it for a couple times, like you would have to do it in three minutes during a commercial break and then I and then for the next like I would be in the scene afterwards and I would have orange knuckles and like orange in my ears <laughs> my bathtub. that's still a fun aspect of Saturday Night Live right the fact that it's live I mean they could have gone to oh, a it's tape the, show it's the craziest feeling in the world yeah oh, you, I remember God. one sketch where the they, we were you know sometimes you'll be in the middle of a show and they're like this is cut we're doing something else and you have literally 47 seconds to change into a completely different outfit and I wow. had to change into a suit with a beard and a turban. It's crazy. And uh, when you watch the sketch, the wall is still coming up in the background. Right, <laughs> yeah. And I remember I remember sitting down and thinking like, this is what it's like to be on SNL. And then the second it ended, I went to go change my suit and inside the the pants on the suit it said Jay Belushi and I was wow. just like that's wow. the craziest wow. thing in the world do you wow no kidding yeah there's a lot of that stuff is kind of the best a lot like of my my the bra I wear for Snooky on the inside of it it says John Goodman Linda Tripp Wow! Like it was the, no Lin- it was the bra that John Goodman wore for Linda Tripp. Like it's- I figured they throw that shit out. You mean they save it and use it for I futures? It. I mean, Belushi's pants are still around. Yeah, in the it was wardrobe a suit department? that he had worn. Yeah, and then wow. like you see a picture of him in that suit later on, and you're like, oh man. Do like, you get into it? Like, take a picture of yourself in the suit, and then have it next to his picture in the suit, and all that uh, kind of stuff. I'm not gonna lie, I'm very nerdy about that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually do. I took I, every time I see like like just recently they did well, the Justin Timberlake show, uh, Martin Short, Steve Martin. And then Chevy Chase did the three amigos. Yeah. And I the costumes yeah. were hanging there, and I definitely wow. just took a picture of the costumes <laughs> hanging on the thing. But but I'm I'm very nerdy like that. Like it's good that you do that. I mean you Yeah, you it's like show. the church lady costume. Like I was like, 
That's the church. I was the church lady for Halloween when I was a kid. Where do you go to see the church? Like, is it in wardrobe, or is it like, uh, do they use components of that for, like, something you'll wear? There's, no, there's, there, at, at the front of the studio, when you first walk in, there's the Conehead costume, the church lady costume, and the Mary Catherine Gallagher costume in a big glass case. Oh, wow. But when he did the show... I, he, when Dana hosted, they did a church chat, and I was on it. I was Snooky, and I just they, they had like the costume down in the in the costume department. And I was like, I can't believe this. Like, wow, that's wild. There's pe- and then there's people who are like, I don't remember Church Lady, and I'm like, I I, I can't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you go? They, they, who who can relate to them? Do you go to rehearsals when they rehearse the uh, music and stuff uh, and do all that? Um, I, I do. Some, sometimes. Uh, Are you the guy that never goes home? Are you, like, there all the time? My first year, I definitely was. <laughs> they also have, like, the database where you can watch, like, you know, all the stuff that was cut. So it's, like, this famous sketch that you've loved for your entire life. You can go watch the dress rehearsal version and see what they cut out of it. And, what wow. they, and like, that, my first two weeks, I would be there till 7 o'clock in the morning on a day when I wasn't even supposed to be in just watching that stuff. Now, now I'm, like... Yeah. No, I'm just happy and content. Is it true what they say that like when you work with cue cards, you should always stare at the cue card and not the other actor? Yeah, that's the hard part. It's like, because when you spend your entire life acting and talking to somebody and you want to look at them, and whenever, it's funny, whenever somebody says like, oh, they're looking at the cue cards, they're not, they're actually looking at the actor. Right, that's when they because, screw up. Yeah, because if, when you're looking at the cue cards, the eye lines are right. Right. It's like, I remember I did a scene that got cut with Steve Buscemi, and like, I love Steve Buscemi, I thought he was amazing, and you're yeah. in a scene with him, and you're like, I just want to look him in the face and really act. And you can't. And you can't, and not only that, um, they might change a line they, like you know they might like in between dress and air like you know right. we need 10 seconds on this sketch they take out something so do you, you have ever, to constantly be on cue cards i you, just stare at the cue cards now. yeah right and that's that's the you secret they yeah. say that's the secret but the temptation is to look at the actor do you yeah. ever just memorize all your lines and say that way i could be free so, ha- half memorized like something like drunk uncle on update where it's just you looking at cue cards fine like, you can you and, and not only that you but you, it's a skill you get good at like grabbing a line and then kind of looking at the person or looking off and like it's directly on camera but when you're in when you're in like a sketch with a bunch of people and there's blocking involved do you they, gotta just stare at the cue card do they ever put up the wrong cue card and then send you into a panic well, I, I've had it happen once and it was it was yeah it uh, happened it was the my first cold open it was oh. my first live from New York Oh, my. the first well, time actually, you're... I did it once with Kristen and Fred, but it was the first time I was doing it by myself. Right. And it was a sketch. Ah, God, it was that. Remember that guy? I don't know if you remember this. There was that guy, Eric Massa. He got in trouble for like messing around with a couple of his like male aides or something like that. It was like a story for like a week. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, it was a story for a week and the guy happened to be fat. So I got to do it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and, uh. The it was just me and Kristen Wig, right? And I'm sitting in a chair and I'm being interviewed. It was like my exit, you know, interview for this job, and uh, it was the very first thing in the show. And there's a scroll that comes up and like explaining the whole story with just a picture of the White House. And I hear Bill's voice doing the voiceover, but the scroll's not there. Uh, like it's just a blank picture of the White House for 30 seconds. And I'm like, oh uh, boy. Uh-oh. And then all of a sudden, the cue card guy just lifts up the cue cards and it says. Thank you, thank you. It's great to be here hosting Saturday Night Live. And oh. I'm like, that's the monologue. What do you do? I, I, you know, there's three sets of cue cards, but mine happened to be the monologue. And this kid, it just he stood up so nonchalantly, looked at it, and was like, oh, man. And just kind of walked away. Thanks. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. Do you blow a fit afterwards? I didn't because, like, I, cause there, there's three sets of cue cards. So I just started looking over my shoulder and, like, Kristen... The, is a pro and immediately knew what was going or she I don't think she knew what was going on but she knew that there was something going on right uh-huh. and then Wally the cue card guy who's been there forever uh no realized what happened and he like scooches under a camera and now he's holding cu- cue cards for both of us and he's aimed, like oh, wow. he they, knows they what they he's doing out, yeah but like what about the kid but who... that first moment I was completely Completely terrified. But, but the kid who got up and walked away, did they fire him? No, not at all. Like, cause yeah, it, cause it hap- I mean, it like, happens. it happens. Like, he, was, he sounded like a novice. He didn't even know what yeah. to do. The right? Kevin, yeah, the Kevin Hart show recently, there was a card, there was an extra card that just got slid into it. Oh. So, like, there's a moment where we're talking, and me and Tim Robinson, one of the new guys, and he had written the sketch, and we're talking, we just stop for like two seconds. Panic. 
and then the and then the card and then the guy realizes it takes the card out and then we just keep going like nothing happened. Oh but my like, god! It used to be a lot scarier. Did you almost shit your pants fun. when you first got on there? I mean, when you had to go live, like because you're in front of millions yeah. of people. Yeah. The, the first episode was complete magic. I don't I don't remember being scared. I mm. I was in like eight out of nine sketches. I was like, this is fantasy camp. And then I woke up the next morning, on Sunday, and was like. I have to keep doing this. Yeah. Like it's not over. Yeah. Like it felt like that was it. Like <laughs> yeah, I was, like I did enough. It. And then Do you watch yourself play back? Did you tape it and watch it? The first episode I watched and it was the worst cuz I had been such a fan of the show for so long and it's hard cuz then you watch yourself walk in and you're like you know you're like oh no like, you're like I'm not worthy. Get out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah a little uh. bit. Now now it's just fun because you go back and you watch it. Like, I remember when I first got the show and I met Fred Armisen, I was like, I think he's one of the funniest dudes in the world. Yeah, he's funny. Mm. And I remember going, Fred, you did this one sketch uh, once where you played a, you were a parrot. You were actually Rachel Dratch's parrot. <laughs> and he's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you I remember probably think he's full of shit, but like, kind of offended almost, right. being like, you're on this show. Like, you know, like, how could you forget? <laughs> I don't, now I don't remember stuff I did last wow. week. So, like, you see you stuff understand. on VH1, like yeah. you'll, you'll be flipping through the channels and you hear your voice on VH1 and you turn it on and you're like, and or you're, or you're watching a sketch. And you can't even believe it. And you're like, oh, this sketch was pretty funny. And then you walk into it and you're like, oh, I was in this. <laughs> see, people can't believe that. Be, but, but, but that's the beauty of being on live television every week. You, it, it all washes over you after yeah. a while and it doesn't become so intimidating. Well, I've now I've, this is like, I think this will be my hundred and like sixth episode. Right. And then, so you got to figure there's 10 sketches a week. And then, and, and, or I'll tell somebody like, oh, I remember this sketch you did was amazing. And they were like, that never aired. That only yeah. went to dress. Wow. And you're like, oh, yeah. I, I forgot, forgot that. <laughs> but you know, it's so true. I mean, I think back to my early days in radio, I was a nervous wreck to the point of almost just wanting to pass out. And now to go in front of a microphone feels like more natural than, than not being in front it's, of a microphone. It's bizarre. You want to do this your entire life. And, and when it first happens, especially at some place like SNL, where like Paul McCartney walks over to you and it's like, hey, Bobby. And you're like, oh, that's right. I kind of know Paul McCartney a tiny bit, or at least he knows my name. Right. And then it's, it's transitioning from that fanboy into like, oh, now I have to have a career. I was walking here this morning. The car was like, I can't, uh, I'm late, I'm not going to be able to pick you up. I'm like, I'm, I'm walking, I got to get there. Like, I was yeah, like, right. I, I can't believe I'm going to do Howard Stern. I used to sneak out of my house and go watch it with Mike Henry, like yeah. <laughs> my buddy Mike. Like, you know, it's like on W, on, on NEW, like we used to. Yeah, I'm actually so kind of shocked that Justin Timberlake is so good as a guest host. I mean, oh, he's, he's great. He's really he's good. He's done it a several times. Yeah, he's now. funny. Five yeah, times. Yeah, he's really funny. Yeah, five yeah. times. Yeah, and he, five time he writes stuff, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's super yeah. funny. He's written a sketch. I hope it gets on some day he wrote a sketch oh maybe well he plays michael mcdonald in it and, oh, who's opening up a, from the a restaurant Brothers? called mcdonald's oh. and, <laughs> and is getting sued getting heavily sued and it's abs and he he wrote the whole thing and it's wow. hilarious or wow. he wow. had a hand in writing it you know right. everyone pitches in but like well Bobby's, he's a really funny dude bobby moynihan's new movie is called the brass teapot in it, you play a. I'm, Do you remember what you play? <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it's a, a story about a couple who's a little down on their luck. They find this magical teapot that has uh, that can. Oh yeah, bring I read about riches. this. Yeah, it's a, it's like a. Every time you hurt yourself, the teapot brings more money to you. Yeah, but it's but it's hurt is the it's like mentally, physically, like it 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 starts to <laughs> it starts to yeah, change. It's like a very science fictiony type movie. I actually really enjoy it. And the couple even goes to like like they'll break their own. Fingers to get more money, and to other extents, it's pretty crazy. Sounds and, pretty wow. good. And they have this fat friend. <laughs> Would that be you? <laughs> yep, that's me. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, and my wife is Alia Shawkat. She was a maybe on Arrested Development. Do you get to um, uh, make love to her in the, the film? Um, no, not on the film. So it's a real marriage. No, no. <laughs> yes, oh, you, you you made love to her outside of the film. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you have a girlfriend <laughs> these days, or what's your I story? Do, yeah, you yeah. do. No yeah. kidding. Yeah, can you believe it? Look at you. I know. Wait right? a minute, Howard. That was not a way to act. No, I just want to know if you're... No, I didn't mean it like that. I mean, I, I believe no, I you get have it. a girlfriend. I get it. Uh, I, one of my first after parties uh, after SNL when I first got it, did you... Uh, uh, one that's of my first place. after parties. Uh, I hear those are great. Yeah, a girl came up to me and bought me a drink, and this was not something that happened very often to me. And... Uh, uh, talked to me for a very long time very nice we hit it off swimmingly and about an hour and a half into it when she had a couple in her was like hey i don't know i don't know how to ask you this but what is howard like <laughs> oh no and i was like oh i'm not Artie lang <laughs> oh no <laughs> are you kidding <laughs> 
Is that 100%. your girlfriend now? No, it's no, not my no, girlfriend now. No, no, no. no. Oh. no, no, no. She but, was uh, hitting on you because she thought you were Artie. Thought I was oh, Artie. Dear. But I, don't, I think just wanted to know stories about you. But right. uh, yeah, I get, I get Artie a lot. But that one was like, I was like, oh, I'm not Artie Lang. Well, who are you? I was like, <laughs> I'm, the the new, I'm like the new fat guy on SNL. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay. Then, and I was like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> Where did you meet your girlfriend? At the uh, after party there, too? Because that's uh, the place to hook up. Citizens were game. Oh, you did? Oh, see, this is a long-term relationship. Yeah, we've been together for about four years. Yeah. You gonna get married? Yeah, I hope so. Look at you. You yeah. gonna pop the big question? Yeah, I'm just trying to get through SNL right now. I'm right. married to SNL right now, but right. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Does she resent SNL because like it takes you away from her? She tried to burn it down the other day. No, she, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she choked it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, she's the greatest. Yeah. yeah, actress. Uh, yeah, she's on Broadway. Does a lot of Broadway. She's been on couple. She was on Smash recently. Power couple. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Show well, lazy, couple, lazy yeah. power couple. <laughs> lazy power side. couple. Yeah. There's your sketch. I'm like a surge protector. Lazy like. power couple. <laughs> <laughs> You're a power couple, but you don't want to do anything. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, listen, Bobby, Bobby Moynihan, the new movie, The Brass Teapot. What would it be like if you had a teapot and every time you physically hurt yourself or mentally hurt yourself, you got more and more money? Would you break your own leg? Would you break your penis? That would probably what bring you millions. What would you do? What yeah. would you do? <laughs> See the movie. I'm this up. is what Bobby's saying. <laughs> and he will go into a pitch meeting later today and pretend to be Melissa McCarthy's cousin, cousin. with Jenny. <laughs> hey, did you audition for that movie, The Three Stooges? I did. Who, Carly, I guess. Yeah, of course. How'd that go? I'm not in the film. <laughs> well, we'll that talk about might that be a time. good thing. By the way, tune into Saturday Night Live this week and maybe see Bobby doing a snowboard guy <laughs> walking through the hat. I'm guessing no. I'm guessing no. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if that works out. <laughs> I don't know, man. But uh, maybe it will. Maybe it won't. You yeah. never know. It's an idea. It's an idea. I like it. All right, Bobby Moynihan. Light some people up. You never no, know. You, you never know. You, <laughs> tell Lauren. All right, we will be back right after these words. Bobby, you seem almost awestruck that that just happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I've been watching, I've been a fan of Howard for, for a long time, so it was awesome just to sit there, and it was a lot more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. He's the best. He's a really nice dude. I love talking about SNL, so it was good to talk to somebody who really enjoys it, too. How long before those nerves sort of wore off and you, and you sort of realized that it's going to be a comfortable conversation? Pretty pretty soon. I feel like I got more comfortable as it went on, but I was just uh, in the beginning. You just want him. You want to do a good job. He's the best. What do you appreciate about him comedically, you know, being a guy who really struggled and, and worked really hard to get where you are right now? Well, it, it's kind of like the coming from an improv background, like somebody who just gets on every single day and just talks and has entertained people for so long. Like, that's the, that's the best. I mean, like, we listened to him for hours when I was a kid. We used to watch that WNEW show. I think it was also that part of, like, he's doing stuff he's not supposed to do <laughs> back then, which was, like, appealing as a kid. But, like, now... It's just, he's a smart man. It's fascinating to listen to. And you know how hard it is to come up with new material day after day after day on the fly. Yeah, it's very, very hard. Well, thanks so much, Bobby, and good luck with the brass team. Thank you so much. Thanks for everything. Thanks for having me.